Hello, folks. Welcome to the Nate Land Podcast. I'm sitting here with Brian Bates, Aaron Weber. As always, thank you to our new sponsor, uh, Need to Hire. You need it. Uh, hold on. Hold on. Let me start again. I didn't really start hiring right now at Indeed.com. Oh, Indeed. I thought it just meant Indeed, you know. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Is it? Or maybe we will. This we thank you to our new sponsor, Indeed. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Start hiring right now at indeed.com slash Nate. That is indeed.com slash Nate to claim your $75 credit. Offer valid through March 31st. Terms and conditions apply. Also, download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code NATELAND and get 56 to 1 odds on any NFL team. Bet just $5 and win $280 in free bets if your team wins. That's promo code NATELAND. This wild card weekend at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Restrictions apply. Also, thank you to Viore for sponsoring this episode of Nate Land. Uh, we all got some of the new fall collection, and we are loving it. I wear Viore. I wore Viore all weekend. Get yourself some of the most comfortable and versatile clothing on the planet at vioreclothing.com. Not only will you receive 20% off your first purchase, but enjoy free shipping on any U.S. orders over $75. More on that later. And finally... Hello, folks, to our friends at Helix Sleep. Nervous about buying a mattress online? Don't be. Helix Sleep has over 12,000 five-star reviews for a reason. Their two-minute sleep quiz matches you with a mattress that is a perfect fit, plus you have 100 nights to try it out risk-free. Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com. Uh, helixsleep.com slash Nate. All right, everybody, welcome. <clears throat> Welcome. The new year. Is this? No. We had an episode last week. Uh, well, we did. We did. Not all of yeah. us did. It's good to you be were back. Out there. Man. Welcome good to back. Be back. Yeah, still have COVID. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm all good. So, did you feel anything? I did. I lost uh, taste and smell for a couple oh, days. That's fun. Two of the more underrated scent or senses. Yeah. And yeah. You, you take them for granted your whole life and then you lose them and you're kind of like, what's the point? Yeah. You know, of living, of, of uh, living. Wow, so I think much. It, uh, so much of joy is tied to uh, the way things smell and the way things taste. Yeah. And when that's gone, hmm. you're kind of a shell of a person. Mm-hmm. That's I how would it think felt. it would help you lose weight. You'd think so, but I, I don't you know. Still, you're like in a habit of eating bad. Like you're in a like I could like I could still eat Starburst and mm-hmm. still be like I'm still fun. Our friend brought over some uh, some brownies for us and i couldn't taste them and i ate the whole thing around yeah us. and i don't know why i was i'll just keep trying yeah and then it still kind of felt good and i could remember what brownies <laughs> yeah. taste like so I was like maybe i'll just think it into existence yeah and i ate the whole thing i well, get that well you gotta keep like your joke you gotta keep trying to know I if keep you're trying. getting yeah. over it right and yeah. then all eventually it'll mm. get back yeah, yeah. eventually it'll get back. Uh-huh. yeah I, I i could see that i could eat i could eat you know, you just you're, and two, you're in a routine of it mm-hmm. that you're like, well, I, this is what I would do normal, so I'm gonna live normal. Yeah. I mean, did you feel sick or you feel a little congested? Yeah, it wasn't too bad though. Like you don't feel tired. You weren't no. like laying in bed. If it wasn't COVID, I would have been doing shows. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. What's your first Titan? Was that your first Titan game? No, I'd been to a few. Oh, it was, it was my wife's first. Oh, time. Okay. Yeah. And it was freezing cold and sleeting, and she still had a great time. Wow. Was Titan- it your first time with COVID though? <laughs> I think that's what he meant. Uh, First super spreader event that yeah, you started. That you started. You were the, you were the super in the super spreader. I was in the clear already by then, and I wore a mask the whole time, pretty much. Really? Yeah. Why? Because I just felt it was still. You still feel guilty, even though I'm fine. I yeah. was like, I'm cleared by all. Well, you were outside. I don't know. Well, I just wanted. I wanted to be able to say that I did. Somebody gave me, yeah, gave me flack get, for it. I can kind of understand that, but you should be getting flack for wearing the mask the whole time. I mean, if we would have lost, wait, you went to the Titans game when uh, the Dolphins, the Dolphins yeah, played the Dolphins. If we would have yeah. lost that, I would have blamed that on you for, for wearing, wearing a mask. mask during the whole game <laughs> as you sat outside and just. <laughs> You're like, just like, yeah. I mean, you're like, what's going on? Not man? just any mask. I saw just it. Any mask. You guys were wearing matching N95s. 
In 95s. Yeah, that's a real deal, man. A couple that's of dresses alike. Yeah. You know, matching. Like, they came from the same box. Well, they yeah. didn't have, like, unique yeah. designs on them. Yeah. It was plain. You wrote Titans on it? <laughs> yeah, I said, I'm with her. And then her <laughs> said, I'm with stupid. Yeah. The, <laughs> then that is the sign of serious mask wearing is the N95. That's like, you're like, oh, this person means business. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think people probably watch what they said around y'all. You think they did that? <clears throat> the people. Well, they weren't. I'll oh, say that. I mean, great if they go, hey, let's calm it down. We got a couple N95ers over here, if you know what I mean. So I'm sure they're not going to be able to handle the normal stuff we're going to yell. So let's ease into uh-huh. it. Yeah. I just moved up to the N95. Oh, Tra- yeah? Traveling this weekend. My wife wants me, obviously, the pregnancy to be really careful. And, you know, she says her research shows that one does better. It does the most. It yeah. does the most. So. All through the airport. And I was yeah, that's at the, what the I was at the airport for like nine hours. Oh yeah. Getting out Friday and that thing. I was so tired of wearing Did that you ever go sit alone? Yeah, occasionally. But I mean it was constantly you're just trying to get out. So I was constantly like on this flight, then this flight, and just I wasn't a lot of downtime. Yeah. It was just like, all right, I was sitting on a plane for two hours and then wow. they made us get off. John Chris was on my flight. Oh not really? wearing a mask. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> The opposite. He was the only he one. Was, he, yeah. And um, I see him just get up and walk off the plane yeah. pretty early. And I'm like, what is he doing? And he made the right call because our flight was a connection to Atlanta. Yeah. He just drove it. And, um, and I mean, by the time they ended up canceling our flight altogether, he was probably halfway to Atlanta. Yeah. So he made wow. the right decision. And he beat you to Atlanta. Yeah, I ended up. I finally got a direct flight to where I was going, but he was already in Atlanta before. Why didn't you take the direct flight first to him? Because it was leaving so late uh, that I, that's what I was worried about. Yeah, so I was yeah. trying to take an earlier flight, and then it, it ended up. I booked this flight that I ended up taking. I booked it three weeks ahead of time, and then because of all the consolate consolations cancellations at the airport, I'm like, I better leave a day early. Yeah, that flight got canceled. Then I kept getting on more and more. It ended up being on the same flight I booked yeah. like three weeks earlier. Yeah. And I got a bunch of flights I didn't even get to cancel because I was just booking flights left and right. <laughs> yeah. I spent about two thousand dollars on flights <laughs> yeah. for a Southwest flight, yeah. eighty eight bucks one yeah. way yeah. to Norfolk, Virginia. Yeah. <laughs> what time was it getting in? Two fifty. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. For and a that seven o'clock like, show. Seven o'clock yeah. show. That's cutting it pretty close. If anything goes wrong. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know. <clears throat> yeah. I remember you like book a flight. Would it when you book a flight in the old days? What did you call? You call. Imagine booking I flights. So. I think you would. You would just have to call the airline, mm-hmm. and then uh, imagine being a comic. Then you have to just you're just on the. I guess they just Crazy. drove everywhere. <laughs> I when we got off Delta, that was the first place they said call the you know call Delta to try to rebook, and I called, and they were like, "There's a two hour and four minute wait yeah. time," <clears throat> and. Um, they said, well, the call- average age is 60. <laughs> That's holding. It has to be. Yeah. It has to be. Because you can do it on you can do it on an app now. It's it, it almost like kind of pushes you to the direction you should do. It does do that, yeah. And it's like you can just do it on an app. And you it has that's so funny. It has to be this two hour wait time. And everybody and whatever age you are listening to this, they're your age waiting for this. <laughs> yeah. But what but we're doing we're in line at the ticket thing. We're also on our phone and they're telling you to call. But then they say, we can call you back, you know, just stay yeah. in line. So I'm finally on my Southwest flight. I've been at the airport all day. I'm finally on my Southwest flight. We're about to take off. And Delta calls me back. And I'm like, well, I mean, I'm fine yeah. now. But it's just so yeah. funny. It's like seven hours, eight hours later, they yeah. finally get back to me. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Brian Bates. Uh, I can speak with Brian Bates, please. This is, that guy's voice is tired. Yeah. Brian Bates. But I've been on the phone for eight hours. Like his voice is gone. Uh, so where are you at? You're like, I mean, I'm already home. Vacation's <laughs> over. He's like, all right. You get a lot of, so you have a lot of credit now? Yeah, and then I had to cancel my hotel for, because I was trying to fly in a night early. And the lady, you can't just get a person there at the spot. Mm. And the woman, I think she was in India. And then she's done with the whole thing. She said, she tried to pitch me on Hilton Honor, like to, for points if I listen to a spill. She had a rooster crowing in the background. Yeah. <laughs> And it kept crowing. So I said, ma'am, I can't hear you because your rooster's crowing. And she laughed. She's like, yeah, I, it's the sun's coming up here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And oh we finally just gosh. had to cut it cut it off. What time did you call? Well, I called in the middle of the day here, but in India, it's... Oh, in India. Yeah. 
Oh, that's I was like, what? I just pictured you set your long, you woke up before this, you wake up before the sun comes up. Like Jerry's Nana. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Chemical bank. Yeah, and the alarm goes off and you're already sitting there and you start dialing and you get, and you go. That's what I honestly I was thinking I was thinking Virginia. So I'm thinking like you yeah. called at like four thirty in the yeah, morning. Yeah, like four thirty in the morning. She goes, Well, sir, I mean the sun's coming up. You know, and you know, this is the time you get up. You go, I've been up for a few hours. Yeah, this is what time I get up to pee, and then uh, I just kind of start my day, <laughs> kind of get going. I got up at four fifteen this morning. Would you? Why would you not just let the thing crow and then just get the points when she's done? Um, what's going on over there? Oh, it's a uh, it's making it's noise. Rooster's grown. Harper's got. She's getting texts now. That was a. She we gave her own Apple ID, mm. and so she has her iPad. So we use her iPad to time the thing, mm. and uh, so now it's a uh, you know it's a <laughs> it's it's, a it's very it's weird it's weird you're getting text from me. I, I do I kind of liked it because it was like sometimes I'm she would be texting me she was like where are you I had to take a picture in New York it's crazy uh -huh. to be texting your kid. And then it's, but it's like, I do like it. I was on the road. Like I was able to send stuff to her because she would always use our phones. I mean, we watch, she can't do anything on that. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> we're aware of what's going on, but <clears throat> that's yeah. a new one. You gotta, you know, but mm -hmm. she, I mean, they just, bam, 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 bam. Uh -huh. you, and you just want to read. I want to read them all. Mm -hmm. What are y'all, <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, uh, to answer your question, I don't. I think I was just so frustrated and uh, so tired of, that I was just freaking out. It's funny to think that you you're like, because I, I would be like, all right, well, I didn't have to listen to it because there was like a rooster crowing, and so I got the points mm. without having to listen to spill. But you go, ma'am, I'm trying to take this all in. <laughs> <laughs> you really want to invite you go. I'm trying to write it down. I want to know what I'm getting into. Yeah, I might want to really sign up for this. I want to really sign up for it. Yeah, yeah. I might like it. But your rooster is ruining it your for me. Your rooster is ruining it. I flew in. I was in, because uh, I did this night show. And then uh, I when we came home that day, uh, it was the day that it started snowing here real bad. And so I was like, we were, why was I, ch I had to be home. Did I have to? What was I doing? There was something. Oh, 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 oh I'm writing something. And I had, someone was meeting that we were writing together all weekend. And so uh, it was, uh, so we were having to meet for that. And he was coming from LA. And so his fight was already in the air. So it was like, all right, well, he's going to make it. And I was in New York and then we're watching it. And our flight just got, it got, it ended up being fine. It got put delayed like two hours and we didn't land till, you know, eight thirty or nine. I was supposed to be home at like four. And, uh, but it, I had to stay downtown because it was, it was, it was late. It was, you know, it was, it was the temperatures were in the teens and so I think it was too hard to, I don't know if we would have got to my house. Yeah. And uh, so I landed and went to the hotel downtown wow. Nashville. Or at least that's what, you told, to say there. that's what you told Laura. So I told Laura. <laughs> the golfed. roads are too bad. I go, I don't know what's happening. I'm going to land in Orlando. <laughs> I'm going to go uh, to Florida. You know, I thought I was looking at flights because you're like, what if this gets canceled, what are we going to go do? And I was like, because then some of it was coming up to New York. I was like, so we just stay in New York one more day mm -hmm. and fly out the next day. But then I was worried, like, if, it, if this thing hits New York, now I don't want to get stuck in New York. And so I was looking at, like, do you go? You probably would have just went to Atlanta. And then, but it was like, do I go to Atlanta? Do I go, should I just, like, fly to, like, Florida? And, like, let's just get down there until it's warm. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Just something. Where do I want to be stuck? <laughs> yeah, where do I want to get stuck? I might as well get stuck, you know. All right. Yeah. So... Yeah, that was it. That was yeah. So, <laughs> but you were in, you were here this weekend. I was here this weekend. Yeah, and you were headlining. I was in Charlotte at the Comedy Zone. Had a lot of folks come out. Very cool. Yeah, yeah. Very it's cool. It happened super last minute. It was oh, yeah. uh, the headliner dropped out. So like Wednesday, I got the call, and That's then the best. Friday I was there. Yeah, and it worked out. That's there. There's something fun about that when you're starting out. Like the, you know, that Wednesday, you get the call. Like, and it's like last minute. Like, it's yeah. just the best, man. Uh, yeah, for that sure. That feeling's the best. Like, it's, I don't know if gigs get more exciting than that. <laughs> I mean, they all, they do, obviously, because it's, it, everything gets better. <laughs> but, <laughs> they do. <laughs> There's nothing worse than that either. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be doing it. <laughs> but I'm saying, I don't know if that excitement, the new excitement is, 
there's it's special, right? I don't yeah. say you don't get excited. I I was excited to do you know to do, go sit on the couch of the panel of the Tonight Show. That was unreal. Like I I can't believe I got to do that. But it's like when you're like that, it's just crazy. Yeah, it's my first time headlining a weekend there. That's a big club. And I think oh I have the weekend off, and then I get the call. Yeah. Oh my weekend's very different yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, and that's uh -huh. the best. Uh -huh. Like it, that's what you love is because it's you want to work. So like when you want to be working and you're not you're not like going like my weekend was free and now it's not i still get excited about that and as soon as i think i can have a free weekend then you're like oh i'm working now yeah. and like because it's like i don't know you just think this will all be taken away it's all you know because you're everything's built on nothing there's no yeah. it's a fake job it's a fake job yeah. and so you just i still to this day like if you get something you're like something pops up and you're like hey, it's hard for me not to go i'll do yeah i'll take it mm -hmm. like i need you know because it's i'm afraid that it's hard for me to take off, like do a vacation. It's hard for me to go like, I'm not working. Don't call me. I could see getting to that point. Like if you're busier and you're just like, this is getting too crazy, but I'm not there yet. Like it's hard to go like, all right, well, I'm blocked off this time. No one call me. I still think I want someone to call me every day and be like, hey, we're still working. Everybody's yeah. talking, you know. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You're always afraid someone's getting ahead of you. You're always afraid someone's getting ahead of you. Mm -hmm. And you feel like if I'm not, you know, I don't feel like I can just go away. You're like, no, 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 I got to be. You got to be in and out there. Stay in it. Stay in it. That doesn't go away. Nothing better than that. Comedy Zone, Charlotte. Last place I drank. Really? Yep. Stop drinking. Uh, not specifically because of that. As I was doing those comedy clubs, and then that was one of the last clubs I was doing, and I was going to theaters next. So I, I opened two years ago. I opened for John Lovitz there, and um, he's on stage and he's doing very well and I'm in the lobby and I'm just standing out there and just kind of, you know, you're just killing time. And they say, there's a crazy woman in the bathroom. And what happened was this lady had some kind of breakdown. She went in the bathroom, she locked herself in a stall. She started ripping up toilet paper mm. during the show. So a, a server heard her screaming and walks in and goes, are you okay? And she's like, uh, she goes, I don't want to talk to a white person. So the server goes, Oh, yeah, okay. Let me go. Let me leave. And they went and got an African American server. The chain went in and she said, Are you okay? And she said, I'm being, I'm wanted for murder. I'm on the run from the cops. I get not want to talk I'm, to a white person. <laughs> if that's your, I mean, that, that makes the most sense of, like, you're like, Why would you say that? And she's like, I'm wanted for murder. I'd be like, I totally get why. I, I totally get it. I think that's a, that was a smart move on your ass. So this is her story. She, her story is she's being wanted for a crime she didn't commit. She's being wanted for murder. So she's she's freaking out. She's, she's ripping up the toilet paper in the bathroom. And they go, well, you need the show's going on. Like, did she sit through yeah. your set? Twenty feet away. Well, here's mm. here's what happened. So they go, you need to leave. She's like, I'm not leaving. And they go, well, we're gonna have to drag you out. So they get all the female servers to go in there and grab this woman. She comes out. She's white, by the way. So I don't know oh, why really? she. I don't know why don't she know. cared about what race yeah. the person. She's getting carried out. She's yelling. It's so. It's so crazy. And I'm just standing in the lobby, trying to stay out of it. And they're dragging her out through the lobby to kick her out. Her feet aren't even touching the ground. And, they and she drives past me, and she looks over me and goes, "Hey, you were great." And then, <laughs> yeah. just, keep, and then just keep walking <laughs> out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it happened at that club, so it's fun to be back as the headline. Did you follow her trial? <laughs> I don't know how to. I did look up in like the Charlotte newspapers, like, <laughs> like murders crazy. and stuff, and I couldn't find. I don't know what she was talking about. It was. Yeah. I think it was drug related. She yeah. was just having. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, they were involved at least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I'd like to think she's a serial killer. <laughs> yeah, she loved Terrence comedy so much. Yeah. She wanted one hey, less. Big hurrah. fan. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I appreciate it. You uh -huh. say I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. okay. Hey, thank you. Yeah, yeah. thank you. So I'm a I still want to be polite. Yeah. I go, hey, yeah. thanks. Shirts, hey, shirts thanks. and scans yeah, are right here. Just bouncing around. Appreciate you coming out, man. Thanks. Yeah, <laughs> thanks for coming. Yeah, even with everything, I, it's, yeah. it's always an honor. Mm. Uh, it's funny that like yeah, just having to deal. I was think with comedy, you got to deal with this kind of crazy stuff. Uh, where it's like that's a story of like, you know, that's just part of like you're just used to. Most people wouldn't be, I don't know. It's like that would not happen somewhere. <laughs> people have real lives and they don't, they're at real jobs. And they, and then our jobs, are like, you're like, yeah, that happened. You're like, oh, and you forget it. You're like, the fact that you're not, that's not the main story you tell everywhere on earth every day. <laughs> <I know. laughs> you should walk out the door every day and go, by the way, let me tell you this one story. And then, but you kind of go, oh, yeah, I forgot about this. Uh, <laughs> I had forgotten about it till I was there and I saw one of the other comics that was on the show. And I go, do you remember when that? He was like, oh, yeah, yeah dude. Yeah. I think about it all the time. Yeah. It's wild. Yeah. 
I thought about like, like we were riding the show, uh, we were riding the show, and uh, I called my dad about something about something with magic. Really, but it was like funny to call my dad, and then Rob Roselle, uh, and who I was riding with, and he's like, he was like just laughing at the idea. Like it is, I was like, it is crazy that I just called my dad. And we just talked about this magic thing, <laughs> at like ten thirty at night. I just I, let me call my dad real fast, and we talk for one second and i was like all right that's what i was thinking about yeah. and then that was it yeah and he's like it's just you know and you're like you know it's almost like you think about your family you're like yeah we're not we're out there <laughs> uh, you're like that is weird uh all right this week everybody uh we're gonna start these comments uh from you guys uh <laughs> this week know. we're starting with the comments <laughs> yeah as always i don't know i was kind of uh, had a few thoughts in my head uh mary M- Marin Kovic. Right? It's probably pretty Mar- good. Marinkovich. Marinkovich. This podcast with Sonny is the most fun Nate has had in all of the podcasts, and that made it real fun to watch. There you go. Yeah, yeah a lot of people said this one and the Seinfeld, Martin Norman episode, Stop. were their two favorites. My two favorites. <laughs> yeah, and theirs. Oh, and theirs. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> that is, why do I have the most fun when you're not? I feel like you can just let loose and be yourself and yeah, you don't have to like, coddle me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It does feel better. Uh, <laughs> got more, you got more yeah, room. In I got here. more room. In Step here. out and then let's just Let try it either way. Uh, Matt, I like your. I was your your you having your tobo- toboggan on. Mm. It's just on. We didn't plan on wearing all wearing. We Titan all wore tight stuff, stuff by chance. Henry is on the sh- show. Uh, yeah, which we recorded Henry for. Now we're back to doing these podcasts. Are doing the comments, but yeah, we all we all have tight stuff. Titans one. Titans. I mean, unreal, dude. Uh, so exciting! You never thought in a million years. I didn't, I I don't think I didn't think we were going to get to the playoffs, but I did. When first round by, it was crazy, mm-hmm. crazy. Yeah, and uh, so it's huge. It's huge. But Great. I mean, you have it. You you like. I think most people when we wear a toboggan inside, it's kind of like more up. It's mm-hmm. more of a hat. Mm-hmm. And yours is mm-hmm. as if you're going to jump in snow. This is my game wear, and this is what you wear at the game. <laughs> This hat, yeah. Yeah. So the toboggan is pulled down. I can't even hear you guys. <laughs> I know. Well, it's funny. It's the idea of it is. It's, I don't even think these things are on. It's pulled. It's pulled down as you go. You got to put your toboggan on, and you're like, well, there's only one way to do it. Mm-hmm. Like if I wear one, sometimes, it's, especially indoors, and you're just wearing it, mm. it's usually high. It's usually right. Mm. Wouldn't you say? Oh, yeah, it's usually yeah, above sure. the ears. It's a little on looser, yeah. and yours is that on. Snapped no, it's off. Like, yeah. I wear it. It's cold. It's on a helmet. Like it's on a helmet. <laughs> I wasn't paying a plan on wearing it, and then when Henry showed up, also wearing a Titan, yeah. and I was like, "I yeah. gotta go get my Titans uh, to yeah, out of the car." Yeah, yeah. so I went out and got it. Nice, Matt Taylor. I was the first batter to face Sonny Gray in high sc- in his high school debut. Three strikes right down the pipe. That's pretty fun. That's awesome. That's yeah. Matt Taylor, the comedian, comedian yep. friend of ours, right? Yep. Oh He's yeah, here in Nashville. Oh, he was wow. a very good baseball player. Yeah. And uh, he had told me about that. He faced Sonny Gray in high school. It's pretty crazy. Oh, wow. That's crazy. His brother, yeah. He said his brother played against uh, Mudcat Brewer. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Wow. That's fun. Uh, Justin Fabiano. Fabiano. I think Fa- you got it right the first time. Fabiano. Fabiano. That'd be funny. <laughs> Have you met them? <laughs> How you doing with the Fabianos? And you're like, God, what? <laughs> And they're like, well, you don't say it Fabiano? And you're like, ah, we say Fabiano. <laughs> and it sounds, you're like, I'm uncomfortable saying that. <laughs> I feel like that would be a nice thing to go. I'll be honest with you, I would, I would like y'all to, I would like the Fabianos to leave. Because I think I'm uncomfortable with how y'all say that. You go, I don't know what the problem is. <laughs> That's how we say your name. Love the baseball talk with Sonny Gray. I used to work at ESPN. And the main show I worked on with Baseball Tonight in 2013 and 14, Rick Sutcliffe was a regular analyst on the show. And he had the best stories. He told us this story about when he was uh, with the Dodgers, there was this day he wasn't pitching. So he's hanging out in the bullpen and decides to get a Dodger dog. And he spilled mustard on his jersey. The Dodgers were getting blown out, and Tom Lewis sort of makes the call to the bullpen, and Sutcliffe has to come in and pitch. The reason for Lasorto making him pitch was because he knew Sutcliffe downed a Dodger dog and got mustard on his jersey. <laughs> Sutcliffe told us Lasorda came to him with a few cuss words afterwards, and he learned his lesson not to eat things like Dodger dogs during the game. That's great. Mm. And then that's him. And he's just got a pitch with a mustard stain. And you're like, come on, man. Can you even like He was a great pitcher. Yeah. 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 Everybody from that era has that same look. You can just tell. 
the mustache, the hair like that. Mm-hmm. It's an eighties baseball player, right? Yeah. So they did yeah, unusual pitching delivery. They did throw a little bit differently back. Then, he right? especially. Oh yeah. He yeah. kind of cocked it back behind his back a little bit differently, but he was a great player. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Jason Moore. Nate's second base throwing yip story reminded me of a similar situation in my church league. The men's first United Methodist team in Hopkinsville, Kentucky. Our catcher received the first pitch of the game. Instead of throwing the ball back to the pitcher, he whipped the ball down the third baseline into left field. From my position at first base, it was quite the head scratcher as it was the first pitch of the game. No one was on any base, and our third baseman was not on the bag. The left fielder retrieved the ball and got it back into the infield. The second pitch... The batter took ball two, and once again, the catcher sends the ball into the outfield via the third baseline. <laughs> a now miffed left fielder once again ran and retrieved the bewildering throw. Third pitch, rinse and repeat. At this point, both teams and the umpire were like, what the heck, dude? This game is going to take all night if you just rocket each ball that crosses home plate into left field. He had to be subbed before the first batter completed his at-bat. Turns out his occupation as a helicopter mechanic for the 101st Airborne Division at Fort Campbell has caused him to use some uh, industrial adhesive that day when he managed to get all over his hands and bring home. He sat for two hours in the in two he sat for two hour two innings at the water hose trying to wrench the substance off. So it was like stuck to his hand <laughs> and it would go, he'd go, he's throwing it there and then just launches it. Dude, that's so funny. That's so and just, you know. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. I mean, that's that's the deal. When you got when you're playing a game where everybody's got like real jobs, you're like, dude, I was at work today. Got crazy. You know, I can't yeah. tell. Yeah. I can't say, hey, I can't work on this helicopter because I, you know, I got a big. We got to play First Baptist tonight. I gotta, yeah, we got to play. We're playing the Lutherans. You think you, you know how they are? You know, just start saying it's, it's a big a, game. It's a big game. Yeah. Uh, you know, the Catholics going to be out there, and you know they get all drunk and start yelling. <laughs> it can't be. <laughs> Cody Byer, listening to Nate talk about the ridiculousness of a character in a Hallmark movie parking a car in the middle of the road made me lose it. My wife loves Hallmark movies, and every single one I've watched with her, I caught up some. I caught up on some obscure detail. I Argue. Get, I get caught up. On I it. get caught up. Uh, I argued with my wife for an entire movie about the shoddy infrastructure of a so-called wealthy fictional county, <laughs> country, country. Yeah. Uh, another time I got irate about a royal family flying coach without any kind of special treatment. They just walked through the airport like a commoner. I couldn't get over it. Anyway, keep up the good work. Love their podcast. <laughs> that I couldn't. I, that's crazy. If it's a royal family. We've experienced something like that. We went to... When we were on the road, me, you, and your road manager at the time, Noah, yeah, we went to see <clears> the latest <throat> Bad Boys movie. Yeah, <clears throat> I hadn't seen the first two. I think this was the third one. But Will Smith's character is v- very wealthy, right? Yeah. And there was a scene. I didn't think anything about it. When we left the movie, you were livid because he flew in coach. And you were like, why would he be flying in coach <laughs> back there? Do you remember this? Yeah. So, yeah. so you were very much I, just like this guy. Yeah, that's... uh. Yeah, it was the, the 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 bad boys? That's crazy. That I forgot we went to that. Uh, yeah, why was he fun? They were like f- rich, famous. Uh, I thought they were police cops. officers. They were, yeah. but I don't know. I haven't seen the original Bad Boys, but you guys told me that he was very wealthy. Their house was like crazy. I don't now. I don't remember. But, but you were yeah. you were pretty upset. You were just like this guy. You're pretty fired up about it. <laughs> I get it. Yeah, I get it, Cody. Uh, <laughs> they're all still fun movies, though. You yeah. can just turn them on. You know, yeah. if you can look past that, but I, I could get you not getting past that. Yeah. That's why my wife won't let me watch uh, housewife shows with her. Cause you just dissect I mean, I've done everything. One and I'm like, are you kidding? What are these women uh-huh. talking about? Like, are yeah. you, and then it's like, don't walk. You get out. She pauses it. <laughs> I mean, if I enter the room, she pauses and waits till I'm completely out of the room yeah. before she presses play. Cause she knows she's watching nonsense. Yeah. I, I have my nonsense too. I get it. You, but there's some stuff that you're like, all right. Yeah, well, Lucy will do that if she puts on like the the uh, the Golden Globes or something. Mm. And she goes, I just don't, I don't want you around. You're yeah. gonna ruin my whole attitude watching yeah. this. And I go, I get that. Yeah. I'll go somewhere else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they, they they enjoy it. It's fun. Mm-hmm. Everybody's got their fun thing. Brian Townsend couldn't believe when Brian said his baby lacks a nasal bone. The same thing happened with our firstborn, but it ended up being okay and actually making for a funny story. At our 20-week ultrasound, we were told that 
They couldn't see a nasal bone that this could signif- sig- signify possible chrom- what? chromosomal chromosomal <laughs> issues. That was a lot of like like curves. That was like I've a- never heard you bail on a word like that though. You went chroma what? Well, chroma. I don't. Th- I think I could have handled chromos. I, I, I can't even do it now, but I think I could have handled that word. <laughs> And it was the signify and po- like there was that f- I felt like I was on a road that was a, like yeah that was a crazy run you're like how many <laughs> how many turns are we making here you know that's like someone it's like when you drive a car and, and it's so turny that you're like I'm think I'm t- I'm over driving <laughs> you know sometimes it drives easy and sometimes you're like is this where's this where am I going yeah. every it just it's a left and a right mm-hmm. and you're like I don't even I can't do this uh, all right. It's a very serious issue. We were scared to death. <laughs> they sent us to a specialist the next week. He, too, informed us that he could not see a nasal bone. My wife immediately started to cry in his office, and I began consoling her. At that moment, the doctor said, well, there is one more thing. Often Asian children don't develop a nasal bone until later in pregnancy. Neither my wife nor I are Asian. <laughs> the doctor then looked my wife straight in the eye while gesturing toward me and said, so do you have anything you want to tell this guy? <laughs> he began to chuckle a bit as though it was just a poor attempt at humor to lighten the mood. We couldn't believe it. My wife said, what? No. And we, beg- and we and began to cry harder. I wanted to punch the guy. He then immediately turned and left the room. We didn't see him again. Everything turned out fine. A happy, healthy baby boy. Good luck to Brian in this stressful process. But at least he hasn't been accused of cheating on his wife. I mean, that's, uh, yeah. Huh? It's a yeah. guy trying to be funny. Didn't, yeah, didn't work. Hey, yeah, it's like that doctor's just trying to be, you know, yeah. trying to lighten the mood some. You want to be like, I would like to see how he delivered it. I think I could deliver that. <laughs> you know, I think you could put me in that same situation. I want to get Brian and his wife. I wanna, we're going to redo this. Uh, I think I could deliver it, and it would be fun. If you, you know? played the doctor. If I played the doctor. Yeah, it's all about. That's what people don't. It's hard to deliver something. Really deliver. Yeah. yeah, baby and a joke. You think you're good? The doctor should get it more than anybody. <laughs> That's a good opening line when you have yeah. to, you know, if you got bad news about the baby. Yeah. Listen, there's going to be a lot of tough deliveries yeah. coming up here. One is this bad news. One specifically was your baby. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? <laughs> As a doctor, deliveries are tough. <laughs> I've never seen anything like yours. Who's the toughest? <laughs> what? You think that would be a good job? You could get contracted out by these hospitals. You could deliver the bad news to people because you can do it in a in a fun you do way. it in a nice yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's it can't be something that's like let's say Brian. You say you have to tell me that I have gout. Like you have the, gout. You, t- you throw a gown on. You come in. Yeah. You have to tell me I have a gout. I would. I mean, I would just come in and be like, "Hey, dude, you know what? You got gout." And then I would do that, and you'd be like, "Is that good?" You're like, "Yeah, dude." It's like you could a guy your you size. Just- you should have fifty things. <laughs> And you only have gout, bro? And then I would fit, I go, come on, dude. He'd spin it. I go, that's unreal. Like, that's so, I wish I had gout. You're doing better than me. That's how I would tell you. That worked, man. It works. I feel better about it already. And you're like, dude. And you would go home, I only have gout. And everybody then would be like, that's not good, though. And you go, no, the doctor was thrilled. He said I should have been. He was thrilled about it. Yeah. He was, I couldn't believe you no, I think they'd be got out of too. the car. Because I thought you were the guy I was coming to visit in the car, and you only have gout. <laughs> That's what I got told that day. He goes, we got one guy you need to see, but I don't think he can get inside. <laughs> did, you, did you say he'd throw a gown on? <laughs> like he would no, get dressed as a patient? No, not a gown. I meant like a doctor jacket. Yeah. Oh. One of those white <laughs> lab coat looking things. Yeah. He gets yeah. down your level. <laughs> no, he yeah. doesn't put on a hospital he gown. He goes, what are you There's doing? nothing in the back right yeah. there. Are you a doctor? I am. I am a doctor. Psychiatric yeah. patient. Yeah. yeah. You got gout, son. No two ways about it. Courtney Walker, I completed a, a MRI on my brain and spine this very morning. A word of advice to breakfast, take the Valium. I was all set up and ready to go when 30 seconds into the tunnel, I yelled, nope, I'm panicking, I'm panicking. Thankfully, they were able to calm me down and I finished the MRI. I hope you had uh, better luck than I had. If not, I can't wait to hear the story. I did the MRI last week, went fine. It was... Um they, have you guys had an MRI? I've had a few. I don't think I have. A few of them. Yeah. For what? <laughs> I had knee surgery. I broke bones in my back. I've had a few different things. How old I are you? <laughs> Were you like I'm Michael, Scott, Michael Scott when he I'm burned 30. his foot? Yeah. You put your foot in the... How'd you break bones in your back? I had knee surgery in seventh grade. 
And then in fifth grade, I broke two bones in my back, and I had to have a bunch of MRIs done. How'd it's funny that? that you went backwards and telling those stories. That's true. Yeah. Well, I don't know why you did that. You go, seventh grade, I had this. Also, third grade, I lost my foot. You're like, well, what are we? First you know, grade, I killed a man. When I was 29, I had <laughs> eye surgery. But when I was two, I had uh, I had my left foot was crooked. That's my doctor stuff. Like, if you had to go through your doctor, why would you say it then? I know. Well, for starters, when I was 27, uh, I broke my collarbone. And then, you know. Before that, and then when I was five, I didn't have a collarbone. I was born without one. And uh, they go, Asian? That's what they ask. That doctor just says that with everything. That's what that doctor should have said. And they, they go, you got to say something? Because I'm just asking. He goes, well, do you, all, do you guys have collarbones? And then he makes up some other crazy thing is the Polish don't have collarbones. <laughs> he just starts going down. And they're just like, I don't. He goes, I don't, maybe. Does it run in your family? I'd look. Yeah. <laughs> I'd see, you know. So why'd you break your back? I broke it playing football. Okay. And then in high school, I hurt my back again. So I've had three, I've had three different MRI injuries. Yeah. Did you have a life. concussion? I did have a concussion. I didn't have to get in an MRI for that. <laughs> oh, they just said. He's they said, Liz, it's probably they done. Go, boo, boo. <laughs> yeah, they just knew it. They go, look at him wobbling around. I did. I walked to the wrong sideline. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Football. Wow. And no idea. I I kind of I could kind of tell what was going. I I was just so out yeah. of it, and yeah. then I just kind of came to in the in the uh, like the hospital on campus. Oh wow! Yeah, you had a hospital on campus. Yeah. Of high school? No, this is uh, college. Oh, when you <laughs> played, what did you play? We played full pad intramural football. Yeah. So it was dorms <laughs> dorms against. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just, just High a school brief, campus like, hospital. that's like, a, you know, like, now nah, I played football in college and, you know, we had a <laughs> hospital on campus. You're like, wow, dude, I didn't know you were that good. No, nah, it was intramural. It was nothing. It was make-believe. It was us, you know, whoever couldn't get past this one level and we couldn't let something go. It was how many, how, who, that's how we went. We started college going, all right, who's still not over the glory years? <laughs> that's what it was. And then dude, everybody's dude. like, I mean, I still want to get after it. You go, all right, all right. Let's wear some helmets and hit each other. They walked the road, same wrong sideline because they're both on the same side. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah, I don't even know. How Just would you step know? right here. You're like, uh, hey man, your shirt's on, ours are off. Go back on the other side. Like that's the jerseys you we had, had on. jerseys. You dude. didn't have shirts it. and skins. Shirts and skins. <laughs> hey man, do you have a? Uh, you look pretty stupid over here. Where you got blue jean shorts on? We're all long blue jeans. <laughs> that's how we tell the difference between the teams. We're playing in the long blue jeans. Hey, look, dude. I know it wasn't varsity football, but it got pretty intense, man. I'd ma- so the picture is a picture on my, uh, that picture of my dad. Yeah, up in the top. Uh, that's he played full pad in, when he went to Trevecca in college. So my dad went to college late, like when he, like so I was five. I was probably five when he graduated, yeah. six or something. And, uh, and so I would go down there, and they would play. Dad, my dad, and all them would play full pad. We go watch, and I would wear like a plastic football helmet. That picture was on the front page of the Trevecca paper. Oh, really, that's cool. Yeah, and like there, uh, and so we would. Uh, it was, and so I'd wear all that stuff, and I would like fake, you know, run around and play. Mm-hmm. But I'll never forget we had one guy, that dad. I mean, he came out of the bench, and his whole face was covered in blood. <laughs> so like he just got hit, and they sent him. And I mean, I, I mean, I was five, and I remember just it was, and he just like wiped it off with his shirt, and I was like, "Who is this? Yeah, what is happening? Like, and no one was like running, no one was, you know, and it, uh, I never forget that. Yeah. That was you. My dad was you. You and my dad could talk about that. <laughs> yeah, we could. Yeah. Well, so are you? What, I feel like we got distracted. No, I did the MRI. It was oh, fine. Okay. They did put you in a tunnel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he's fine. Anyway, uh, all right. Had a stroke, but wasn't too bad. Uh, lost my nasal bone. So you had nothing. Uh, they uh, they give you a little button to push in case yeah. you freak out or something's wrong. Yeah. And as soon as they put me in there, um, I have an itch. Like I just want to scratch my face, yeah. yeah. And the fact that you can't do it just makes you think about that much more. Yeah. They're like, uh, okay, this is how long would you think an MRI would last? Uh, Part of me thinks an hour, but is it like twenty minutes or something? Or? It is actually twenty minutes. Exactly. Oh, is like, it? I thought it would be like really fast. Like, oh, I thought it would oh, be really? like an hour. 
I thought it was just like they put you in like a microwave. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and after a minute, they pull you out. Yeah. But she's like 20 minutes. And I was like, I mean, I feel like you have a guy underneath you on the bottom tray. They go, they go to, <laughs> like bunk beds. Yeah, it's like yeah, you can't. You're How at you a, doing down there? You're at, you're, you're, your insurance only covers so much, so you're like you see a guy. You're above. He's on a grill above you, and you're just looking at him. And I'm he, face down. He's face up. Yeah, no, I think you're you're face up too, but you, oh. that, they don't have that bottom thing. So that <laughs> you know that he's got the gown on. You're like, oh, yeah, I gotta look at. It. And then he, they just put y'all both in there. <laughs> And just get it done quick. Why don't doctors do that? Rotisserie. Rotisserie. They just, they're just like, let's wrap it up. Let's get them. Let's get these boys in and out. You know. Uh, but it went fine. Okay. Good. So you couldn't scratch. Did you couldn't press scratch. the button? No, I, I'm not going to do it for that. So I just, I just held out. I, I, mean, I would have to take something. I mean, now that I'm claustrophobic, it'd be a big problem. Yeah, they ask you that a lot. Like, do they want you to be? Would I be knocked out? Or I would no. I mean, she said she took Valium or suggested Valium. Yeah. But, I mean, I mean, I guess you could, but that's not what they offer. Is it locked? Like you're in it and it's locked, or your feet are your feet are out? Like, could you climb out? Mm, no. I mean, the tube's just right above you. Yeah, but if you had to get out, could you like inch your way? Yes. Out? Yeah. Yeah, you could like slowly. Yeah. Inch your... <laughs> to do the worm out of it, basically. Yeah. <laughs> See, I wouldn't even thought about that. Now, if I ever get one, I'll be thinking I can't get out of here, even if I wanted to. Dude. Yeah. Ugh. <laughs> what if we go? We go to different rooms for one. I just think that you get in that MR. <laughs> they're, they're just pushing up <laughs> on the bottom of your feet, <laughs> get it, shoving you in there. Get in there. <laughs> you're just going. <laughs> you're kind of caught in between the big and the small. You're like you've lost so much weight. You're like, I mean, the big one was, but it's too big now. We need to get you in the right, the other one. And this one, just, uh, it's like they're loading a <laughs> <the> musket. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just, just pushing your feet in. He goes, <laughs> it's such a funny image. <laughs> Get them out, boys. And they got to pull you out. <laughs> well, they finally get you there. They got to go real fast. Yeah. <laughs> you come out of it, right? That's, that's that sound that's, when you walk up. <laughs> Aaron's out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do they have different sizes? They have to have different sizes. I guess it can go up and down. MRIs? Yeah. I mean, it was pretty, pretty big. Oh. Yeah. They have ones at the zoo. Oh yeah, for animals. It's true. We have to do that one. Wasn't that from a? Yeah, where I just heard that TV recently. Show? Somebody just had a. They had to use a zoo. They had to use a scale. Mm-hmm. That, oh, oh, we talked. About it was a uh, Louis C.K. Right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah his new his special. New special oh. he talks about. Yeah. Uh, Michelle Robinson, <laughs> when Cole said it's a smart thing, I guess you wouldn't get it. I think Nate missed that entirely. Cole hanging with the big boys and holding his own. Nice work, young man. Can't wait for the big reveal. I have a daughter applying to university as well. Exciting time. Good luck. Dream big. Wow. Yeah, very nice. Cole did good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think he, he I, I think I could, you know, he threw a little joke in there. Yeah. Cole coming at me. I think he might have been smarter than you, Aaron. I think uh, Cole is. He might be. Where's he going no. to school? I think wherever he wants. I think Notre Dame's his. Uh, Safety school. <laughs> I think he's going to blow his brains out if he gets accepted to Notre Dame. I think that's he's. It's, that's it's, what he below, said last it's week. below a safety school. <laughs> oh, yeah. I go. What if you get a Notre Dame? He's like, I'll kill myself. He goes, I might as well not. I might as well go dig ditches. <laughs> that's what it is. Word for word. Uh, Tanner McBride. Cole ha- could have run run a Cole. Ha- <laughs> Why would I have trouble with that? I don't know. That's a good Cole question. Cole could a have of run. Sand- oh yeah. Why would you? Why would Cole have could that? have run? See, I would have Cole- put it. I would have written that as a contract contraction, so it's Cole could have run. Okay, could Cole could have run? Could have, could have. Yeah. yeah, it's like an awkward Cole little. Cole could ha- oh. Cole could have run. Step. Yeah, it would it's help. like your first. It's like you when you first step out of doors, like a little bit longer down. Than yeah, you thought. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then you're already at the bottom, and that's what happened. Like Cole could have Rhode Island, and then I'm like, I'm already at the bottom. I missed <laughs> four steps. Cole <laughs> could have run across Rhode Island 27 times this year, north to south. Wow. wow. So last week, Cole said he ran, what, 1,300 miles? Is that right? Mm-hmm. Which Nate said's half like the U.S. <laughs> and It would be 3,000 miles. Is the U.S. right? Okay. Is it not? Yeah, 1,300. 
Why are you laughing? Is three thousand? You're laughing as well, L.A. to New York is like three thousand, right? So thirteen. Yeah. So so yeah, I guess it wasn't. It didn't. Uh, it didn't merit a laugh. No. <laughs> it's like for the general conversation, I, like oh, like basically half the country. You'd say like. I assume that you'd done the math wrong. Did, I'm sorry. No, I didn't look it up. I just assumed. I, think, I don't know why. I, I just guessed right. three thousand miles is the country. Thirteen hundred basically ran half the country. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Making the conversation move on. All right. You know. I anyway, don't, he's running. Anybody's gonna stop it. I don't think anybody <laughs> turn around. You'd be the only one. Sorry. Raise your hand. Uh, it's actually two hundred less than half. Yeah, but it's not really half. And I don't know where you're running to. What are you running to? Just the beginning of where California Bakersfield, and then that's it. You go. Come on. Who's this guy? That's you <laughs> in your class. Yeah, I guess if you're running from uh, Connecticut to Bakersfield, this teacher doesn't know what he's talking about. Uh, Kim Dunlap. Nate, I just cringe when I hear you talking about Sour Patch Kids. I'm a dental hygienist. Mm. And when the pH in your mouth goes below 5.5, calcium will leach out of your teeth. Just make sure and have regular dental checkups. Go all the time. Let's go every day. Uh, Do you think uh, you should go to a dentist that doesn't have the undertaker doing the cleaning? Yeah, that's a good thing. I go, yeah, I go to Jody Jones. Uh, I'm like, Jody, could you not... Yeah, he has the under undertaker does my teeth. I go, he's fine. Uh, it's uh, yeah, I'm still working on it. I did talk about that on the Tonight Show uh, about having uh, according to the A one. My my physical is not till the 18th, January 18th. Mm -hmm. So I'll figure out more of that stuff. Uh, I guess I'll do the real thing. Well, according to A one, A one C, which I see right here, Trevor Trevor Ramsey. Yeah. Those A1C numbers are bull. Uh, it's, yeah, I mean, it's good to hear that, I guess. I mean, I was on the line. Mm. So I, when I was reading some reviews about it, it was, the numbers could be before and after. Mm. So I don't know, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's like, I, it's, it could be off one or two percent. I have to be close. I, I, in a weird way, this part of me wants to be close because I don't, you know, it's like the way my brain works is you're like, I need something to be wrong. I, I, otherwise, you're like, no, you're fine. You're like, it can't be fine. Uh -huh. You know, like it's hard to quit something when you're, especially when you're addicted to it. And I think I had that trouble with alcohol was it was like, you can not think you're, you, you don't think you're have a problem because your only sign of a problem is, uh, a mess, a guy drinking at, in the driveway and hiding it. And that's your only sign of like, well, that's bad. Yeah. You don't, you don't, you don't realize that you're like, no, 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 you overindulge and you overindulge a lot. And when you do do it, it's like too much. And like I do with sugar, it's like, I'm doing it. I, it, it. I can't stop. I'm like out of control where I'm like eating. I'm realizing I'm eating like, you know, and it's weird to be addicted. Like I'm not, I'm always talking about being fat. Like, but I'm like, you know, I'm like, I'm, I'm for my probably build, I'm way more than I should, but I'm not a big guy. Mm -hmm. And so that's even hard too. When you think like, well, I'm not huge. I'm not like, you know, I don't look like I'm going to be walking around with diabetes, but then you're like, yeah, but I'm eating. That's why I say my tab, my metabolism might be unreal that I'm even uh -huh. at the size that I'm at. Yeah. Cause I should not be. I think I eat worse than, I think I eat worse than you. I think Probably I eat worse these than most. days, maybe. Yeah. These days, I almost think I'd eat. I eat worse than people realize. I, I. It's more. It's. It's not good. I'm trying to think. When I had pizza. I had pizza today. I worked out then had pizza today. Oh, from I the pizza I, yesterday. That cancels out. If you work out, I know but you're not supposed pizza. to canceling out. Uh, that's, <laughs> like that's how I would always. We got a weight yeah, loss challenge going on here. <laughs> yeah. Just shut yeah, up. Yeah. Yeah. We're supposed to. Who's going to be down to 165? Is what we would like to get to. Can I jump in on this? Yeah, most, what do you, you want to be? Most people said, Aaron, but... All right, we're going to have to adjust the scale. Yeah, it's like inflation. Could you, could you get below 200 before we get they to... They go, it? you got to get to a you got to get to a 1980s 165, <laughs> which is today a 230. <laughs> that's, like, that's not a bad... Yeah. He's like a lane in the contest. Yeah. yeah. She's got yeah. different numbers here. To get to you 200 before you get to 165? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'll try probably. What are you not. at? You go say where you're at. Yeah, at two, it's like two fifty, two yeah. fifty five. Uh, what do you want to get? What to? do you want to get to? I would, get down to two hundred would be great. I haven't two hundred. I haven't even thought about a goal. Oh. The best shape of my life was summer between junior and senior year of high school. I was two fifteen. Yeah. And I was big, but I had been lifting weights yeah. for football and stuff. Yeah. I was just built completely different. But two fifteen was like. I didn't know it at the time. I thought I was not doing well. Turns out it was the prime of my life. But yeah. if I get back down there, that'd be great. 
Two fifteen. Two fifteen is kind. That's of, a lot though. You have to lose forty or. Uh, I mean, I was three. I was three thirty. And so we would have to leave. I, mean, I was like one ninety one with shoes on, and I'm probably back to one ninety. So one sixty five. Is that thirty five pounds? No, twenty five pounds. Twenty five. And then so you'd be thirty five, which could be fair, because if you're trying to, I think you could lose ten very easy, easier than we can lose ten. Oh, I can lose weight faster than you yeah. more easily. Yeah, yeah. I think at sure. least off the top. Yeah. And then it's going to, when you get down to that last 20 is when you're going to be. Right. And we're already kind of close to that. Like I'll be, yeah. I think I can get to 178 pretty easy, but then it's going to be hard for me to get to 165. Okay. But I'll get under 180. I think if I just a good week or two, I could be low 180s, maybe 179, 178. Mm-hmm. And then it'll be from there. And keep eating that pizza in the morning, dude. And we'll see what happens. Uh, yeah, I mean, I told, I don't know. I I won't eat good. It's hard. Yeah, I'm a I'm is. a full on addicted yeah. to sugar, and that's and that's why it's like and it's crazy to think you think I want like I want to have diabetes so I can say I, <laughs> so I'm like I'm stop. It's just how you think. Uh-huh. Yeah. You just want something to be that bad. Like you're always. That's the thing when you got to quit something, and I've realized this the same thing with alcohol and everything. You look at everything and you go, well, I'm not there yet. I need something to happen for me to quit. Uh-huh. And you're like, well, it's going to happen, dude, and it's happening. And so like that's what I'm realizing too is like you're you, you almost could be lucky enough that you're even reasonable enough. I'm almost talking myself into this as we're saying this, but I'm I'm lucky that I even don't have to just straight up have it. Like I'm lucky to be like I can f- trust your body and you're going if you're thinking like I need to cut back or I need to stop something, then you need to stop it. Mm-hmm. Like you, you know, you're it's that's that that's the answer. You, but you and you're going to look for you're going to look something like you want something to go, well, that's going to be, I need this to happen. Uh-huh. I need to wreck my car. I need to yeah. lose my job. I need to something. You need, you need to bottom something. out. You need to bottom out. So you, you hear that a lot and yeah. you're, you know, but I don't think you, <clears throat> bottoming out is, is, you know, like when I did it in, uh, you're talking about comedy zone. It was like, I was going to theaters and I knew if I couldn't, if I didn't stop this, like I, I wouldn't get to where I want to be. And so, and I was making a big change from going to this to this. And it was almost like I took things seriously. Mm-hmm. And like, that's how I need to think about <clears throat> this sugar thing. It's not about like bottoming out, like where I need, you know, I'm thinking I want this diabetes so I can then say I have to, you want to have something. It's, it's an easy excuse. I've been talking to someone once, you want something. You usually want like, you, you want to go like, well, I have this. Cause then you get to go, well, I don't, it's nothing I could do. And not, like you're an excuse or something Yeah. where I need to just quit. Because it's like, well, if I, I, and I've thought about this a lot, if I want to do as much as I want to do with my career and how busy I will be, if uh, drinking's taken care of, well, now food is going to be taken. Because I'm, mm-hmm. I can't be getting, like, I'm getting tired. Like, when we were writing all weekend, it's like, I'm getting tired. Like, I go eat this stuff and then I feel tired for a long time after. And you're like, it's like, this has got to stop, dude. Like, you can't just be at, it just all hours of the day you're just like you could close your eyes a little bit mm-hmm. and you know so if i want to go farther yeah there you go mm-hmm. maybe i'll do it how often are we gonna weigh in uh uh so we did last week last week so the end of this month let's okay. see where we're at all right uh, da- uh daniel reeves i enjoy watching nate on jimmy fallon this week nate seems like such a natural with these uh the interview my question is are you giving the questions that jimmy asked ahead of time you seem like you had the mcdonald's and koi pond bits lined up were those prepared or did you have to steer the conversation there uh it's pre- it's it's pre- i kind of give them a heads up I, I let them know what you do a pre-interview is how you always do it and i think everybody kind of does it even when they do long interviews uh we don't do pre-interviews like podcasts you don't always do it but uh with that show it's like i and as a comic it's a little different like when he's when he's talking to the celebrities and they're talking about a movie or they're talking about something like that like uh it's gonna be uh, it's 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 different it's uh you know like i think they're asking like what's marvel well Mm -hmm. anybody and they might go like hey do you have a story you want to tell and you could be like yeah ask me about the you know ryan going to six flags and Mm -hmm. you're like all right so that one i was kind of like all right i was going through it like what i'm I want to say, and I have a mix of like, so the diabetes thing, 
I am going to like have the type two, the earned kind, which is something we said all on the, or when we were talking about on the podcast, I said that that worked really well. Yeah. That, I've never done that on stage, but I, I will probably put all that stuff yeah. in on stage and work it out into a bit. And then the Koi Pond thing, if you heard that, that's, that is a joke I do on stage, but you can kind of just so you, like, I'm still doing these jokes, but then, weirdly enough, like you can kind of hide them on panel, you know, the Koi Pond was kind of mm -hmm. how I do it. <clears throat> but the McDonald's thing, I just never have done. Like, mm -hmm. you know, so I was the first time I was saying it was outside of like us talking about whatever. And I said it like in a driveway. I've said it like to my friends, like, you know, uh -huh. uh, so I kind of was saying it for the first time. And you just like, you're like, all right, I'll be able to do it. Like, you know, it's like, that's going to a new, that's a different world that I haven't been in. That world of like, I, you know, you want to be like, I, I want to be the guy that gets going tonight show and be like, yeah, yeah. I'll just be funny. So I was, I was, a, I was probably a lot more in control. I was, I felt a little, I felt I rushed myself a little bit. Uh, it's hard to learn how to sit there and like let the laughs come. Yeah. Uh, you know, just because you're, you, it's, I've never done that like that. And, you know, you still get there and you're like, I don't think no one knows who I am. Like you're just, and so you're still like, you know, you're sitting on the couch and I'm a comic. You're like, there's a, you're over your comic. Yeah, this is the comic. He goes, uh -huh. and now you're like, like a celebrity. Right? I don't know. You're like just yeah. there and you're yeah, like, yeah, yeah. it's like Kate Blanchett than me. And then you're like, I don't, these people are like, who, you <laughs> yeah. know? And so I got to like, why, you know, you got to, I got to destroy. Right. And that's what I wanted to do. Uh, it went great, man. Yeah, it was Thanks, great. Man. It I was meant, fun. I meant to mention, we're talking about food. I forgot. Did you see your dad's posts yesterday? Speaking of food in the Bargatze family? No. On uh, Facebook or? Uh, so, oh. he, um, <clears throat> so, uh, this is where I get my jeans from. <laughs> Whataburger just opened last week in Nashville. It's one of like eight or nine locations opening this year around. So, your dad spent two hours and 17 minutes in line <laughs> getting a really big plate of fries and some other stuff there. Yeah. So, I didn't see they put, so I was with, uh, uh, we we talked to them last night in line, like I, we were Facetiming <laughs> with them, two hours and seventeen minutes. I mean, they call, I was like Facetime on the Harper talk. I'm like, are y'all still? And they're like, yeah, we're still in line. They none of them should be eating that. Dad shouldn't have that <laughs> dead gum drink. I'll tell you that right now. Uh, he does have diabetes. That's why I mean, he shouldn't. None of that should be. You know, I mean, he could have at least stood next to the car while he waited. <laughs> That's what I should have made him do. That should have made mom be like, get him out of the car and make him stand there. And uh, he he also knows eat something bad with us. And he's like, don't tell your mom. You're like, we don't, we're not going to let you do it either. Like he tells us, like, it's like your family's the one that's not going to let you do this. But yeah, that, they were in line. The line in, it's in Hermitage. It's where the Applebee's used to be. And uh, not the one we worked at, but it was, uh, mm -hmm. but it, the line is, it's crazy. Yeah. I, I drove by yesterday. Uh, earlier before they got there. That's funny as I drove by it and then we call them later and they, they were in it. So it's like looking at Christmas yeah. lights. <laughs> <clears throat> so we got, uh, so the Henry Cho's about to come on. This is, this will be the longest one I think we ever did. Yeah, pretty long. Uh, talked a lot about old comedy. Uh, it kind of worked out, you know, I mean, then, sadly, it's not even worked out. We talked about Bob Saget uh, and uh, Henry, you know, Henry's been around for a while, knew Bob. Uh, really well as I, as I knew him too, not as well as Henry, but so we talk about all that stuff. Uh, so, uh, and we already recorded. That's why I'm kind of saying it like this is the end, but, uh, it was great. And, uh, so let's read these and then you get into that. Uh, we love our Helix sleep mattress and it was really fun to unbox. Like I've always said, you always pop it. The, uh, unboxing is <clears throat> I'll come to your house and unbox it. That's just, you buy one. Let me come unbox it here. <laughs> I enjoyed that much. We had uh, Rob Roselle, uh, uh, the writer I'm writing some with. We he slept on it, loved it. Slept. He slept. He's like I sleep. He slept great. Long slept long here. You know he has two kids, so he's at home. He's usually up, and he was like, <clears throat> man, I'm sleeping like you know we'd go to bed like two or three, and he's like I'm sleeping till like ten, eleven. Like it's like oh, the real man. deal. I slept on it. You slept on it here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was great. Yeah. Uh, he sleep as a quiz. It takes two minutes. You complete it, matches your body type, sleep preference. Everybody's unique, and Helix knows that. They have several different mattresses, models to choose from. They have soft, medium, and firm mattresses. Mattresses, mattresses is great for cooling you down if you sleep hot. Mattresses is great for uh, spinal alignment. That's a big thing. I'm trying to work on that now. Uh, I think my spine's not always you know, aligned. Yeah, it's not right now. 
So if you're looking for a mattress, take the quiz. You order the mattress that you're matched to, and the mattress comes right to your door, shipped for free. You don't ever have to go to the store, mattress store ever again. Uh, we have the Helix Dusk Luke Lux. It has medium support. Uh, we've slept on it, and that's what we like. And everyone that sleeps on it is, I mean, they love it. I think a medium support is a pretty, probably standard one. Uh, and so uh, if uh, they have a 10-year warranty and you get to try it out for 100 nights risk-free, they will even pick it up for you if you don't love it, but you will. Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash Nate. That's up to $200 off mattress orders and two free pillows at helixsleep.com slash Nate. Also, Viore. The whole podcast crew got a few th- new things for the winter months. Laura got the performance jogger. She's wore it a ton. Uh, it's soft. I mean, it's just it's just a great thing to wear. I'm like trying to wear this all this kind of jogger stuff or all this kind of stuff like just on the road. Yeah. Like this kind of athletic gear. Just I want to just buy the same thing and wear it the same thing every day i wore it all day at the when i was at the airport yeah. all day <laughs> i mean it's just it and you don't look like a lunatic no and that's what's nice uh-huh. and you can go i can go hit golf balls in it and go you know it's just i i, I want to get it all viore is a new outlook on performance apparel perfect if you're sick and tired of traditional old workout gear viore can be worn for just about any activity like running training yoga but also great for lounging or weekend errands it is so comfortable you will want to wear it at all times. The website is easy to order from. Viore is an investment in your happiness. For our listeners, they are offering 20% off your first purchase. Get yourself some of the most comfortable and versatile clothing on the planet at vioreclothing.com slash Nate. That is V-U-O-R-I clothing.com slash Nate. Not only will you receive 20% off your first purchase, but enjoy free shipping on any U.S. orders over $75 and free returns. Go to Viore clothing.com slash Nate and discover the versatility of Viore clothing like I did. Uh, also, DraftKings. Uh, DraftKings, Titans are in. Sports are getting, I mean, the Titans clinched second straight AFC South Division title, number one seed in the AFC. Uh, this is the time people are betting. People like, to, if you like to bet, people are betting on sports right now, on NFL. All the games are coming. Imagine if you bet on that. Raiders, uh, <laughs> Chargers game. I mean, all that kind of stuff. Like, I mean, just how fun it is. And now the playoffs are here. DraftKings Sportsbook and an official sports betting partner of the NFL is kicking things off with a huge offer, counting down to Super Bowl 56. New customers can get 56 to 1 odds on any wild card team to win their game. Bet just $5 and win 280 in free bets. That's so great. If Sportsbook isn't available in your state yet, you still have something to play for this wild card weekend. Everyone can play for huge cash prizes with DraftKings Daily Fantasy Football Contest. DraftKings is giving all new customers a free shot at millions of dollars in total prizes with their first deposit. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code NATELAND and get 56 to 1 odds on any NFL team. Bet just $5 and win 280 in free bets if your team wins. That is promo code NATELAND. This wild card weekend at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL, must be 21 or older, New Jersey, Indiana, or Pennsylvania only. Oh, in those, you have a 20 uh, New customers only, uh, new customers only, minimum $5 deposit and $1 wager required. One per customer, restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problems, also called 1-800-GAMBLER. Uh, and finally. I was going to say, that sounds like a great 56 to 1 odds because crazy. the teams this weekend, there's a lot of them that do have really, there's not like a dominant team this year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A yeah. lot of those teams could win the Super yeah, Bowl. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Uh, Indeed, uh, our new sponsor, Indeed, nice. Indeed is our Indeed <laughs> of a new sponsor. Indeed. Indeed it is. Indeed it is. Most people think finding the right talent is harder than Brian running the computer. But with <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> what? Yeah. Indeed. indeed they wrote that? The Indeed, yeah. Uh, but with Indeed is easy as me messing up my words. Indeed's killing it right <laughs> here. The, uh, if you are hiring, you need Indeed. Uh, because Indeed is the hiring partner where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. And Indeed is the only job site where you are guaranteed to find quality applications that meet you meet your must-have requirements or else you do not pay. Instead of spending hours on multiple job sites hoping to find candidates with the right skills, you need one powerful hiring partner that can help you do it all. 
Indeed partners with you on every step of the hiring proper process. Find great talent through time-saving tools like Indeed, Instant Match, assessments, and virtual interviews. This is how people got hired, right? Like I, saw, I got a job through Indeed. Oh, really? Yeah, uh, a job out of college. I put my resume up on there, and I applied for it and get it all through here. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's legit, man. Yeah, there was no no more calling, no more looking in the newspaper for jobs. <laughs> That's what I had. Newspaper. <laughs> you know? It was I'll like you, you put your stuff on the newspaper, like, uh-huh. please hire me. Yeah, I'd yeah. circle them. Yeah, circle them. Yeah, <laughs> and now indeed, and if you want, and indeed's for if you're the if you're the one hiring. One of the things that I think is great about Indeed, or you put yours on, is that they have virtual interviews, which saves you time. You can message, schedule, and interview top talent all in one place. It is so easy to connect with applicants. No need to install anything extra. Indeed's virtual interviews work from your browser. No downloads, plugins, or purchases. That's so great. Join more than 3 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent like Aaron. You might get Aaron. Uh, start right now. Start hiring right now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at Indeed.com slash Nate. Offer valid through March 31st. Go to Indeed, I-N-D-E-E-D dot com slash Nate to claim your $75 credit before March 31st. Indeed.com slash Nate. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire. You need Indeed. So we would like to welcome our good buddy, Henry Cho, here. Good to be here. Finally, Thanks for having me. Finally, <laughs> figured our schedule's lined up. Finally. Boy, finally. I tell you, we've been trying for a while. Been trying for a while. It's like I was trying to golf, too. Like, you're, a, it's, it gets hard. You got to plan way ahead and pray it doesn't rain. Yeah, yeah. Story, yeah. Right? Yeah, I think we're, comics are very, like, we're very last minute. It's like, can you do it now? And you're like, I can do it now. Right. That's why, you know, my buddies, they're like, hey, let's do dinner on. And I go, hey, hey, just call me last yeah. minute. And they yeah. will. They'll go, hey, tomorrow night, meet me here. Sure. Amy sure. and I'll be there. And yeah. we're there. Yeah. So. Yeah. We're very last minute people. Yeah. As comics. Like, I think you're just, you, you can get to, yeah, like trying to plan. I mean, if it has to be something, you're like, you got to tell me way ahead. So I can put it in the cat. Like it's got to be. Right. We got to have it blocked off. But you're like, I don't know what kind of mood I'm gonna be in that. Like we, <laughs> you know, it's like such a weird thing. Like it is. You're that is that sounds so stupid. No, most people but, don't do that. <laughs> we no, go, no, they what, don't. But most mood? people don't have 20, 23 hours a day to reschedule. Yes, that's the yes. other thing. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I mean, we're wide open. Uh, Mon- uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, if it's the sun's out, we're open. Yeah, that's, that's my thing. Yeah, I like it too because we will not. Two Sundays, like you want to go, and you're like, I'm not. You're like, I don't want to go. I don't. I think you're out. We're out too much. We're like, it's a, you're going to go to a restaurant. You're like, I don't know. I feel like I'm at a restaurant every night, like doing shows. Like you're, yeah. I mean, we're eating in the back, but yeah, yeah we're still out. Yeah. We have, they yeah, don't let I, us eat with the people. Man. I don't go see, uh, yeah. I don't go eat unless somebody in my family wants to. Yeah. And yeah. stuff. And then people always go, hey, you want to go see this show? No, I really don't want to go no. see anybody. <laughs> yeah. But you, but you know, I'm real. Yeah. And he doesn't want me there. Yeah. So we're he even. Doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, we talked about going to a show, like I went to a concert, but it is nice if you can go, sometimes go to a show, but yeah, you don't want it to be a comic and you don't, and you want to be like, I just don't, let's go sit wherever. I don't want it to be a whole thing. Right. It's like, I just want to watch. Yeah. You know. Well, you were telling me the story, was it James Corden that you took your daughter to see? Yes. See BTS. B- so this was right before COVID. BTS, yeah. you know, the biggest yeah. band in the world. So my daughter loves them, obviously. She's a little teenager. And so, um... Buddy of mine said, hey, they're going to be on James Corden. Do you want to bring her out? And I'm like, uh, really? So I go. And for the first time in my life, I'm on the other side. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm sitting there with her. We're front row. And the cameraman <laughs> looks at me and goes, what are you doing here? Yeah. <laughs> and I said, I, uh, my daughter, he goes, wow, you ever been over here? I went, never. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he's like, weird? I went, totally weird. Yeah, yeah. And my daughter's like, what are they talking about? I said, nothing. It's all right. And then she goes, oh, I I didn't think about that, Dad. You've never been out here. I go, I don't want to be out here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I want to be in the back and hanging out. But it was weird, yeah. Yeah. It was but, a total Yeah, it is different- crazy. When you're sitting on that other side, just because you're just not used to it, you're like you're, you're just, you kind of get used to that, the chaos of the backstage. Right. It's kind of like when someone's driving your car. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I, I, my son was in town. He drove my truck the other day, and I was in the passenger seat, and I went, wow, this is... I don't like this angle. I don't, I, I don't like yeah, this. Yeah, you've view. never seen the car from that from that spot. No, before, this view right? and I'm looking out the right window uh-huh. and seeing yeah. things. I'm like and finally, I mean, we went like t- literally we hadn't left our neighborhood. 
And I said, pull over. He goes, why? Yeah. I go, this ain't happening. Yeah. yeah he goes, yeah. why? I go, I'm driving. I yeah. forget it. Yeah. He goes, yeah. really? I go, sorry. I, yeah. yeah. Not happening. We tried. Yeah. We, yeah. Like, I was well, too. It's just your kid driving too adds that. You probably got to be like, why are you? I mean, my daughter's nine. But so, and she's driving. That's yeah, great, man. Got, yeah. We got her into um, it early. Yeah. yeah. You should. Uh, I let her drive a, uh, she drives, like, she'll go, if she ever goes golfing with me, she doesn't really play. I let her drive the golf That's cart. great. You know why? They actually learn how to steer yeah. and how to, Stop and yes. go. It really helps. It really yeah. does. I yeah. I remember a uh, 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 a kid from my high school. Did I ever tell the story about him? Like uh, in high school, the when I took my driver's test, and uh, the kid uh, that we did at Coach Wade, DCA just won the championship. Uh, he coaches there now, but Coach Wade is our our driver instructor. And so I like got behind a car, and it's like most kids are like, yeah. I mean, I've sat like my dad's lap when I grew up, or like you know, like I, I've been randomly behind a car right. and this kid they, they asked him and they go have you ever been behind a car and he was like no and they're like you never like said your kids like you never your dad's like you never even like pretended and he's like no and it was and we just drove <laughs> straight through a stop sign and went to someone's yard <laughs> like he just had no, no concept clue. none of just any of wow it. and you're and so then i like i always kind of think about that so then now like <clears throat> my daughter's been sitting in my lap since she was five like, you know, I'm just not in just like hands on the wood, just like yeah, just yeah, getting, yeah. getting the idea. Of it. Yeah. You know, and by the time she drives, they might even have, you might not even be allowed to drive. That's know? true. <laughs> so, That's true. But I'm, knows? yeah. But when you're, yeah, having my kid drive, it's, I got, so all three of mine are driving now. It's wow. crazy. Yeah. Can they drive stick shift? Yes. That's a rule of mine. Yeah. So, that is a good uh, yeah. Rule. Uh, you know what? Number one theft deterrent. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Those punks get in your the yeah. car and go, wow. Can't yeah. drive that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then go steal they Brian's your, car. Yeah. <laughs> then they, yeah. they take your radio and Brian's car. And you're that's like, right. So it could have just been one car. You're like, could have been. Could have been. <laughs> but, but you can't take my stick so, shift. That's so, right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. The stick shift would be. Can y'all, can you drive a stick shift? You no, in. no. No? No. Oh. No, he's that I, generation, man. That is. I've never had to. I've, I don't know if I've been even a passenger in a car that's. That's a manual. I yeah. got my truck out there. It's an 89 Jeep Comanche. Yeah, it's manual. Five right? speed. Go, yeah, yeah, go. Yeah. Here, okay. let me give you the key. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> drive, drive, go around the cul de sac. I love, a, I love a manual. I do too. I, I, and <clears throat> on certain cars, it's a must, you know? Yeah. And well, you, like your truck is like that. Like that would be, you'd want it in that. Like, oh, yeah. That's a perfect truck. And I actually got that truck to teach my daughter how to drive a manual because my boys have a. Uh, 2000 F250, 98 uh, Ram 2500. I had to go big diesel to get a straight shift yeah. for them to learn. But they learn, and it all happened there. And, and I probably told you all this story. We're in Honduras on a mission trip. And I needed a truck moved because I had some supplies I had to get up there ASAP. And I yelled at 12 high school seniors. And I said, hey, when do you boys move this truck? And they're like, we can't, Mr. Cho. And I'm like, why? They go, it's a stick shift. And I'm yeah. like, oh, really? Y'all push it, okay? Yeah. So I put it in neutral, and they pushed it. Yeah. And I'll never get Jackson was like 12. And I looked at him. I said, that's never going to be you. Yeah. You're yeah. going to know how to drive a stick shift. So I went back to the parents going, you understand you're sending your kids to third world country that is super dangerous, and they can't drive one vehicle in the entire country. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if something happened and they got to get away, they can't. They can't. And it changed. Everybody's thinking. They're like, wow, never mm -hmm. thought about that. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. What if one day your kids have to drive an automatic? Are they going to know what to do, though? Yeah, because well, it's automatic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That automatically comes. You know what? It might backfire. They start, like, I'm doing saying. the... It the, might. The, they do. Yeah. They do. They get in my, my wife's car. They get in. The first thing they do, they're, they're reaching. And I, yeah. I even start pushing my left foot on a clutch. Yeah, sometimes. yeah. You start. Yeah, that's always the fun part when you uh, when you were driving. Because I learned on a stick shift. I learned on a stick shift. I remember my parents... My mom tried to teach me at our, the ch our church parking lot, Temple Baptist Church, and couldn't do it. Did it like a couple minutes, got so frustrated. My parents would get, we come a family that have really no patience. <laughs> and we try to like help out. And then it's like, I can't do it. And then my mom just got out. And like, it was like, it didn't happen. But I eventually learned. And then, uh, but I took a driver's test on my aunt's car because it was automatic. Just because it was like, oh yeah, close enough. Very smart. That you're like, well, let me do at least, you know, I don't want to. Because what you, I was going to, all I had was a stick shift. All they had was a stick shift. Right. Yeah, but you don't want to kill it on a driver's I test. I mean, it's so crazy, dude. Automatic cars were not a thing. Like, they just weren't. Stick shifts were everywhere. It's all it anybody was had. a luxury to have an automatic car. It were, it were, yeah, you had to pay for it. You had to pay for I mean, that's so, <laughs> I, I almost like. 
about getting older, like I rem- I'm reminded almost every day, and like this moment, I'm reminded to go like, man, do you know how to, you don't know you you just didn't have it. Yeah, he's never been right. in ten years. He's young, never, been in, never one. been in one. Yeah, you're twelve years younger than me, mm-hmm. and you just don't ever even. You just never would have seen it. Like, right. I was born right at a perfect time that I got a good glimpse of everything. Right. Mm-hmm. Like I got the old. You did ways, and then when I got a high, once phones came, it was just now it's gone. You're all. You driving automatic cars, <laughs> texting, driving. Y'all barely watch the road now. Y'all just they don't have to. They don't have to uh, sit in the back seat. They sit there and do their little song. Yeah, do yeah, their little do, song. Yeah, do that commercial. Yeah, and they all that's go all they do. And, he watches the West Wing. Yeah, he watches full on series, not just a movie. We'd be like, we'll give you a movie, a full on series. series that goes on for six years. How long is West Wing? Ten years? I don't know. Uh, seven seasons. Seven four, seasons. four that are good. Four that are good. <laughs> yeah. Which four are they? The one, first four. Oh, the first one, three, seven. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It jumps around. It jumps yeah. around. One, three, seven. Goes the back. ones with Sheen in. <laughs> yeah. Say, yeah. Uh, there was a period where on the road with Henry, I had a flat tire probably 75% of the time. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. We, yeah. Yeah. Three out of the four gigs we did, you had a flat tire. <laughs> But I'm telling you, he blew a tire in. We did Lenore, Lenore, yeah. North Carolina, the Broy Hill yeah. Theater, and uh, we came out. Brian has a flat tire, and I'm like, man, you know how to change that? He goes, no idea. <laughs> so I said, okay. I said, well, let's go get a plug kit. And he goes, oh, what? So yeah. we go to Walmart, yeah. which closed at midnight. Yeah. Luckily, yeah, grab a plug kit. I fixed his tire. He was good to go because, you know, and everybody's like, well, why did you try so hard? I said, I didn't want him riding with me. Are you yeah. kidding? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not his yeah. Look at that car. I ain't riding in it. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, but I was, oh, go ahead. No, go, go ahead. I went even on a show once with you in Chattanooga. I just stopped by. <laughs> That's yeah, right. he, had fun, he had to stay three hours after the show. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't it, even on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he came by just to say, hey, and had a flat tire in the parking lot. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. And I I'm kept a, him there till midnight I'm because like, of it. <laughs> Where are you getting all these flat tires from? <laughs> Bad drive. Yeah. I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah. Well, the Comedy Catch parking lot, that was... Uh, yeah, yeah, that was yeah, yeah. 50-50 anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Half the cars there had flat tires. We have like construction going on in some of our neighborhood, and I've started. Dri- I've stopped driving that way because uh, you would get a flat tire. I and mean, I've had like three. Yeah, and it's then, crazy. Uh, yeah, you just got it now. It's like... And now some of the tires get so thin and small, and they're just not made like anything. You're like, it's a, it's done. Low profile. Oh, Low but profile. I, yeah, but... Brian's case, uh, you joined AAA that day, night. Yeah. Because <laughs> I said, I ain't doing it. Call AAA. He goes, I'm not a member. I said, 1 800. Yeah. You call it. Yeah, I joined. Instant right there member. I in the parking lot. That's oh, right. Good. Yeah. Good Did call. you think, what if I just wait for ARP or whatever? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, well, I'm so close. I might as well hold out. <laughs> you know, I don't want to go get involved in one thing. <laughs> Do they even do that? I don't know what ARP. It's like yeah. it's a, that'd be great if they did roadside. They don't. They should. <laughs> they don't. They should. You know. I know. I did. You know, when that thing shows up, you just throw it in the trash. Yeah, the A A R P. Yeah, can't face it. I got How it. I got you? it on my fiftieth birthday. Oh, on your birthday. Yep. Yep. They they they're on it, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, you know, they got nothing else to do. Bunch of old people sitting around looking yeah. at people's birthdays, and they send it out. <laughs> yeah. Did you embrace it though? <laughs> no, I was oh. bad about. It. I did what Henry did. I yeah. tossed it in the trash. Yeah, come but on. They keep sending them. Yeah, they you'll wear you in. down. Yeah, yeah, you'll give in. I wonder sure. what I would love to know what their thing is. They go, we start at fifty. It's about sixty-two when people kind of come around. Like if there's an age that they go, you finally go, all right, I'll do it. Yeah, like that's you know. it. When yeah. once you start show up at the Hampton Inn and they go, hey, I'll give you fifteen percent off yeah. if you're air. Oh, okay, that I'll do. Yeah, that uh, yeah. Okay. Well, sure. I, I think sixty-two is it. Probably it takes you about twelve years to go. Oh, all right. Yeah. I what am. is it? It's like moving up to the senior tees. It is. So my dad, when he moved up to the senior tees, he was He didn't start there? No. He okay. should. Anyway, I'm kidding. Uh, I'm he, kidding. Al- he would always switch. Like he would yeah, sometimes yeah. it was a it, we were like it was almost like it was just like we were slowly he would do it sometimes. So we'd start playing and he's like looking at you know his age where he's like almost there. Mm-hmm. You know, it'd be like randomly you go to a club where you're like, it's like fifty five is like up. Yeah. But then it's like once he hits sixty, and then you're like, well, you can go up now. And he's like, I'm not gonna go up here. And then he would do you know like par fives or something. Maybe a long hole would be like, well, I'll go up for the long hole. Yeah. And then come back. It was like slowly that to then now it's like well we just now it's like hey, he's just gone full blown first full blown. front tees. Yeah, front tees. Hey, I can't wait for that, man. I know. Well, the, the, it's those were those that you play these old guys. You can't beat them. No, like when they're up there in the front tees, because especially there's, you got like a, you got like a perfect age where you can still hit it. Oh yeah, and you're old enough to be up there, 
and then you're a problem. Yep. You're a, you have a good probably five year run, maybe three five year run of just a night. You're just crushing it. In uh, I don't know what year the venue was. It was one of the last ones. Um, Craig Stadler mm. had turned sixty five, so he got to play from the whites. <clears throat> Wow. And, and he did. Yeah. And I'm like, what are you doing? He goes, hey, I'm, I don't play anymore. I'm playing for the Whites. And uh, lo and behold, he won. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He won. And every, so he's on the range. People are going, I can't believe you played the Whites. He goes, hey, I won. What do yeah. you care? What does it matter? He didn't care. He goes, I'm yeah. 65. What do you, Have you, you've done a lot of those celebrity golf uh Yeah. Things. Back in, back before kids did tons. Yeah. Did you do at and I did not. You know, I was on the, uh, I was an alternate and uh, Tom Candiotti uh, was, uh, I was there with him, and this is before Ten Cup. No yeah. lie, We're, they didn't have a range back then, and yeah. they still really don't. Oh, Pebble does so, it, right? Yeah, Pebble so, does it. So we went down to this little area where you just kind of hit some wedges, mm -hmm. maybe. And we're on the far left, and Candiotti shanks his and almost takes out Tom Kite and Lee <laughs> Jansen, <laughs> and it goes almost literally. I mean, just parallel to with us. So everybody turns around, they look at me, and they're like, Hank, what's up? I go, it wasn't me, it's Candiotti. And Candy looks at me and goes, really? You had to tell everybody? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I go, I don't have a club in my hand. And so yeah, Candy's yeah. standing over the next one. I went, wow, how hard is this shot? <laughs> He's like, shut up, man. Yeah. I go, wow, I would whiff it if I did any. Wow, yeah. are you really going to hit? try to hit it? Yeah. Can you really hit it? <laughs> He's like, will you shut up? And he snap hooked it so far left. Yeah. So he wasn't close to anybody. Yeah. So to answer your question, I was an alternate. And then... <laughs> I got to the point where I couldn't give up five days. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Um, my kids started school, moved here, as you know. Uh, you know, I coached my kids' baseball and basketball teams. People. Yeah. I was talking to somebody the other day, and they said, how'd you do that? I said, it was impossible. It was stupid as possible. I mean, I'd do a show in, say, Atlanta on a Friday night. I'd drive home, coach yeah. a game Saturday morning, go back. And, I mean, you know, this is that's first, crazy. second, third yeah. grade sports. Yeah. It's not mm -hmm. that – but that, I was yeah, a coach crazy. for years, yeah. kindergarten through third grade, and uh, I'd coach baseball and basketball, and I made it work. I mean, yeah, I would even tell you know my agent back then when Jackson started playing high school sports his senior year, I said, "Man, I got to have every Friday night off in the fall." He's like, "You, you know, you're a comedian, right?" <laughs> yeah, yeah, I go, "Yeah," but from yeah. August till December, I got to have every Friday night off. Yeah, I said I work Saturdays, but yeah. so I was doing a lot of one-offs in the middle you know you, and one-offs yeah. are hard you know how you like to try to do a tour and so, yeah you know one-offs are going to be the random it's going to be the middle of nowhere right so i'm sitting there you know i'd go i'd watch my son play sports on set friday night fly out on saturday come back on sunday so you know did that for a long time i couldn't do all these big pro-ams that take several days yeah 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 they're they, they, they a lot of that does becomes time consuming a lot of times when you even are big enough to get invited to this stuff you're like well i can't do it no and you're like it's almost like a weird where you're like i could have done it a year ago if y'all would have asked and then they're like no and then you're like well now you're like now where would i how would i even do it right and that, it's stuff it's so much like just the commitment of time yeah it's like they it's, you're just not just playing golf i no. mean there's stuff every night and they expect you to do shows and they expect you to be yeah. here so i mean it's a week and you sit there and go holy holy cow i can't do that and then i was like you said, I, the times when I was an alternate was the times I could have done it. I was single, yeah. uh, and then I even had it where the kids weren't that mobile. And then there just came a point where I said no to stuff for like a decade. You know, I'd do a few here and there. If they're local, I could bop over here. And, uh, but yeah, doing the celebrity golf was always yeah. tons of fun. I mean, we had a circuit for a while. Yeah. Right? Who's yeah. the worst celebrity golfer you ever seen? Um uh, Keep in mind, Bates has done a celebrity. I was going to yeah. say, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Um, <laughs> Myself not included. So this was Tahoe, good night, 89, maybe 94, something like that. Uh, so Rocket Ishmael yeah. didn't, hey, play, go didn't, Irish, didn't yeah. play. Yeah, he shot 81-81 uh, because yeah. they gave him a nine <laughs> on each hole. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the worst was Chris Weber. Uh, I'm getting ready to tee off. And uh, I'm going to be dropping names here. Sorry. Yeah. No, no, yeah. No, I know. Paul McCartney told me to never be yeah. a name dropper. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, thank you. Um, so Michael Jordan comes up yeah. and he starts laughing. I go, what are you laughing at, MJ? He goes, you don't know? I go, what? He goes, you're behind Weber. And I go, what do you mean? He goes, he's never played. I go, what? He's not any good. He goes, never played. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I'm like, well, why is he here? He goes, he's playing for Golden State. He's Chris Weber. He goes, yeah. well, who are you? And I went, yeah, you're right. Why yeah, am I here? Yeah. <laughs> Weber, he's whiffing. He's, it was on, it took seven hours probably. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So everybody in front of him were finished. They're eating dinner and we're behind them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Worst experiences ever. So Chris Weber. Chris Weber. We had to be, yeah. And I yeah. kept saying, hey, call time out. Oh, you don't have any. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. He really liked that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Chris Weber would have been the worst. So you started, uh, what's funny is like, you, you were one of the first comics when I met. I remember uh, my family and everybody was, there was, it was exciting that I met you. Like it was like everybody knew you and everybody was like where you're like, oh, you know, wow, really? show. It was wow. like, well, it was like you were known. Everybody's known you for a long time. And so it was always like that was like one of the, you know, like it was like, you know, you're a little brag and you're like, oh, yeah, I got his phone number. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but you started in you. I mean, you were what, when did you start? What year was 86? 86. So y'all calm down. OK. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and you weren't even born yet. No. No, we talk about this. Bates oh, started his quick comedy. He, he's thinking about getting back in it in 86. Yeah. He gave it a go. Gave it a go. Stopped, gave it a go. Then started 85. again. Then yeah. he started, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so you were, where did you go for it? Did you start in- uh, Knoxville. Knoxville, yeah. Yeah. So I'm in college and uh, I told my buddies I wanted to do stand. I was going to try stand up. Yeah. And they're like, dude, what are you talking about? I said, I really think I can do it. And they went, really? All right. But you're really not funny. I go, I know, but I think I can do this. So I never hung out in comedy clubs, never been on stage, nothing. Uh, I entered a competition. I just called the funny bone and said, hey, uh, I heard y'all got a competition. I'd like to enter. They said, okay, well, we're full. We have 12. You're the first alternate. So if somebody drops out, we'll let you know. So on Friday, I get a call. Somebody dropped out. Still been trying. I've been trying to find out who that was. Yeah. That <laughs> to this is day. so great. And so they go, you're on it Monday. Be down here like at seven. Shows at eight or whatever. So I told my buddies I'm in. And they're like, what? So we're driving down there. I'm, I'm writing my first set ever yeah. <laughs> on the way there. Yeah. And they're going, well, if you're going to do it, tell the story about this, tell this story, tell that story. And so I get there and I thought it was 12 guys like me just trying, but yeah. it was the funniest person in Tennessee competition for Showtime. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it's 11 working comedians yeah. and, and, and me. So I watched the first couple guys go up and I tell my buddies, man, I, you know, I'm just going to, since we're here, I'm going to do it and I'm never going to talk about it again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I go up fifth and destroy yeah and i get a standing oh, ovation yeah. so i walk off stage a guy named jerry kubach owned 12 funny bones at the time throughout the midwest starting st louis and he's like how long you been doing comedy i said that was it man <laughs> that was it <laughs> he goes no seriously how long you been doing it and my buddies go no that was it yeah <laughs> first time ever yeah he's like wow do you want to MC this week and i go what's that he goes oh you do 15 minutes introduction introduce the other acts i'll give you a couple hundred bucks and i'm like 200 bucks yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> So I said, I don't have 15 minutes. He goes, well, just do what you did tonight. I don't care. I said, all right. So I did. Started working on – so that was a Monday. I started working on Wednesday. Yeah, wow. And I dropped out of college on Friday. Yeah. <laughs> True story. Yeah. And so, were your parents thrilled? Oh, yeah. My <laughs> yeah. my Korean immigrant parents? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. They took yeah. it like nothing. Yeah, yeah. They took it like a white guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, are you kidding? Thank my you. dad was – he went ballistic. Yeah. Did not speak to me for like 18 months. Yeah, it was it's wow. your senior year. Or it's like your last year. I was we so close, close to graduate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was like, I was sniffing it. You yeah. know, I was uh, trying on, you know, gown sizes. Yeah. Uh, but it was there. And I just went for it. And it yeah. worked. And, and it worked. It worked. So, yeah. uh, you know, my big break came. Uh, Funny Bones. Uh, Kubak said, hey, whenever you get out of school. He goes, when you graduate. I'll, I'll let you do all my clubs. And I said, well, I'm not going to graduate. I just quit. He went, <laughs> yeah. wow, okay. Here's what we're going to do. Yeah. So I did. I went to Cincinnati, then St. Louis and Kansas City. And uh, then there was a gig in Mizzou at uh, Freddie DeMarco's, Deja Vu's. Yeah. And then we did the I-70 tour, um, which was Manhattan, Kansas, and Lawrence. And then all that just kept going. And you start meeting comedians. Yeah. I worked with Bill Ingvall in Knoxville. Uh, biggest biggest break probably came six months after doing comedy uh, punchline atlanta had jerry seinfeld they didn't have a, his clean his opener couldn't do it so they needed a clean opener i was the only clean comedian anybody ever heard of yeah because <laughs> this is 1986 yeah uh -huh. and so uh i went down work with jerry jerry was like man you know you, are you he goes they're gonna offer you the moon yeah but don't stop doing stand-up because i can't believe you've been doing this six months you actually yeah you get it 
And I said, oh, I love doing stand-up. So. Was this sold out with Seinfeld? Was he already? Like- he, yeah, he was He was probably the biggest name on our circuit. Yeah. So yeah. it was sold out. Seinfeld. It was before the show, but he was. Way before the show. He was. Everybody the, knew him. Everybody knew him. He's Tonight Show yeah. four or five times a year, that kind of guy. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, Jerry's like, hey, uh, you know, where are you going next? And I went, well, uh, nowhere. I, mean, <laughs> yeah. I just did the Funny Bone Tour and yeah. Yeah. I got nothing. He's yeah. like, okay, well. All right, well, let's figure this out. So did some more with him. He goes back to L.A. He tells uh, Dennis Wolfberg, Gary Shandling, Bill Maher, Leno, uh, Rich Jenny, uh, you know, the top headliners yeah, in yeah. the country. Mm-hmm. And so they start calling me. Yeah. Hey, you know, Jerry said you're the guy. I'm going to be here. Need somebody. Can you be there? I'll get there. So, you know, next year and a half, I'm working with the top yeah. 10, 15 guys in the country, sold out shows, smart audiences. So I learned how to work. And then Jerry gave me the greatest advice. He goes, you need to work everywhere you can. You got to get your chops. You can't be this gravy boat. I said, all right, gravy train, not boat. Yeah. Where'd that come from? <laughs> and uh, that's my old joke of mine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so I did. I did creative entertainment. I was doing Meridian, Mississippi, Ozark, Alabama. Uh, you doing, you call them chicken wire gigs? I did a bunch of chicken wire gigs where they had chicken wire around the stage. <laughs> <laughs> Aniston, Alabama, like Deep Yeah, yeah like just Road like Roadhouse. Oh, like you stood like you stood behind the chicken wire, so they wouldn't throw stuff. At <laughs> exactly. You? No, they'd still throw <laughs> it. It just <laughs> wouldn't hit you. Yeah, it just wouldn't hit you. Yeah, just a liquid could get. Yeah, through. yeah, yeah. No, no yeah. solid objects. Yeah, yeah. I'll never get me and uh, Jim Galise. Uh, we're doing a show in Greenville, Mississippi, and the guy tried to pay us in cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> he throws it on the table. That's ten times more than your rent. I go, man, my. My landlord doesn't take coke. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. I just, I just give him a hundred bucks. Yeah. So, um, and you Gale- look back and you go, I should have taken that coke. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. I didn't say I didn't. But yeah, anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. no, I'm kidding. No, I'm just- so, uh, Galise is upstairs up on stage. And I mean, this crowd was awful and, you know, and just awful. And we're both eating it as bad as you can eat it. And he's up there and he's, I just hear him yell, Henry, get the car. <laughs> <laughs> so I go get my truck and I back it up the back door and I'm just sitting in it. Just, yeah. I don't, and sure enough, about 10 minutes later, that back door busts open and Galise jumps into my truck yeah. bed, <laughs> jumps in the bed and goes, get out of here. I'll jump in the cab in a second. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So I pull out of this uh, roadside bar. We were doing comedy. It's creative entertainment. So I did all these gigs, all these really tough shows, and uh, on top of working with the greatest guys yeah. in our industry. Yeah, like it, it, it's a perfect balance. Yeah, I mean those are those are the shows that like people like it's insane for you, a comic to perform behind Chicken Wire. I mean it's insane for anybody. It's insane yeah. to even be in a band. Yeah, but much less like where you're like, no, that I need them to listen to me. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Like they have to yeah. listen. Yeah. And they turn off, uh, you know, Monday night football game, right? At, you know, and third quarter. And they go, hey, we're going to do some comedy. Some yeah. <laughs> didn't you do a gig with Foxworthy where the condo didn't have a front door? Yeah. That was oh, uh, Cincinnati <laughs> Funny Bone. Gosh, 87-ish probably. So Jeff drives from Atlanta. I drive from Knoxville just by happenstance. I pull in 30 seconds behind him. And we're at a comedy condo, which you know yeah. isn't a condo. This the cheapest apartments yes. known to man they can get. So it's on the second floor, and I pull up, and Jeff's just standing there. And I go, what's wrong? He goes, there's no door. (laughs) And I go, what? He goes, there's no door. (laughs) And I go, what do you mean? He goes, the door's on the inside. (laughs) So I go up there, and there's flies in there, and it's just nasty. And he goes, you got money for a hotel? And I said, yeah, but you're not. uh, I said, you're not smoking any. Uh, yeah. He used to smoke. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody that doesn't know that, yeah. get over it. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, he goes, what? I go, you ain't smoking in a room. So anyway, he would open the window and straddle it and smoke cigarettes. But yeah. <laughs> uh, there was no door. No. <laughs> so he finally, I think he talked the uh, club owner into paying like for a hotel or half of it or something. Yeah. But, yeah. 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 Those were the days, man. No front door. Can you imagine? It's just a business. <laughs> Yeah, you're just you just you got your comics that are coming this weekend, and you don't give them, and you're like, is there? And you don't even like, there's no urgency to go get the front door fixed. No, it was it was bashed since Sunday night, probably, and this yeah. was Tuesday. Yeah, I mean that thing's been wide open for two and a half days. <laughs> yeah, you know? it was crazy. Just everything's in there. Oh yeah, and well, yeah. and the crazy thing is, you know, the one of the waitresses who cleaned it, you know, yeah. they gave her ten bucks. This that was the standard, you know, yeah. and the waitresses yeah. go clean the clean the condo. 
for ten dollars. Ten dollars. Ten dollars. Imagine someone's there's someone you're listening. I mean, you would, what would, would you do? Anything for ten dollars? Would you? He can't even drive yeah. a stick. He, he ain't doing another for ten. <laughs> if I asked you to go ten get me uh, another water an hour? downstairs, I said I'll give you ten bucks. Would you be like, I don't. It's not worth it. I don't know if Harper would. <laughs> like, bucks. yeah, for ten bucks. I mean, ten bucks is becoming nothing. Five is like you got to just. Five is what it is now. <laughs> Jimmy Five's Tank. the new dollar. Like, you just have to give five or a kid won't even bat an eye. Yeah. That's like the tooth fairy now is giving out $20, $20 oh, yeah. all this time. So is that where you're, mi- you're missing a couple of teeth? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pulls them out. Yeah. I'm not getting those, but yeah. I remember a dollar. I was pumped about a dollar. That's like the- You got bills? Wow. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, I got one. And kidding. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> I don't even know if that's correct. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. Is that Asian? Cream yeah. money? Yeah. yeah. Okay. You're the one that can try it and see if it's not. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. yeah. But I... Uh, You're not the ones to look at. Right? I don't... Yeah. Hey, is that right? Yes. Yeah. No. yeah. 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 <laughs> so, Jimmy Tingle, a uh, great comedian out of Boston, used to do this bit of, when the uh, stamp was going up from... Um, I think it was going up from seven cents to 12. Yeah. And he was like, <laughs> for a nickel... For a nickel, some man will come and get something out of my mailbox and take it anywhere I want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For a nickel. For a nickel. Yeah. He goes, and you people are complaining? Yeah. 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 For a nickel. For a nickel. 12 cents. Yeah. That, I always like seeing comics like have to update their act where <laughs> you would see them like, like I, I remember seeing it, like uh, someone do like a payphone. They used to do oh, like a, yeah. Because payphones used to be a dime. I remember this. I remember, and I remember payphones being a quarter. And I remember them going at 35 cents. And I was like, it was annoying. It was annoying. You were like, God, so why would they even do that? Yeah. And then it was just over after that. But I do remember I was I was old enough. To, I was, you know, old enough to be like, I was still using pay phones. And it was crazy. Like, probably my senior year in high school, you had to really right. use pay phones. Right. And uh, so, but I remember comics would, this comic would have a joke about that. He's like, oh, they made it. You know, he, it was a dime. So his joke was from when it was a dime. Right. So then he's, to, then he uh, he was like, oh, you got to update it. So now it's a quarter. It's not even a quarter anymore. No. And so then he was like, and then he's still telling this joke like five years ago. You're like, no, not only <laughs> is no one using a pay phone, you're not even to the right amount that it was the last time they were used. You're right. Like you haven't. This joke has been going on for maybe forty it, it, years. It's right. Three and, steps behind. Yeah. And your audience, half your audience, do, doesn't even know what a pay, pay phone is. Oh. No, did not exist. No, no, wouldn't know how to use it. Wouldn't even know what it means. I remember when they went from twenty five to thirty five. I was, I would, I was doing a joke about uh, Billy Ray Cyrus having to change his song lyrics from "Here's a Quarter, Call Somebody Who Cares." Yeah, it's like, hey, and a dime. Here's a quarter. Oh, Travis Tritt. Yeah, Travis Tritt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's a quarter and a dime. Here's a quarter and here's a dime. Call somebody who cares. That's a great joke. I was doing this whole thing. Yeah, he didn't like it. Yeah. <laughs> That's a great topical, like it's just, it's just such a good like. Per, it's a perfect joke for like that and that time. It was like that joke was. I mean, the oh, time, killed the top. Yeah, it, would, yeah, it killed. Nah, it's so funny <laughs> it to be killed. That's yeah. What that a time. one killed. What a time you could do a joke about just raising the payphone a dime. Yeah, and it destroyed. And it destroyed. Destroyed. Did you? So you were. So you were in Knoxville. When did you? You lived in San Francisco for a while, right? Or did, would no, you? No, just, no. Oh, you'd always go out there. I would go there all the time. So yeah. I moved. I was in uh, Knoxville. Started eighty six. I moved to L A. January eighty nine. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I go out in eighty eight. Do some spots. Uh, stay with Bill Ingball. And uh, the crazy thing is, so I did a spot at the Ice House. Uh, and uh, Robert Guillaume, who played Benson on Soap and yeah, had, yeah. had his own show. So uh, his producer came up to me after I did five minutes at the ice house and said, hey, uh, you ever heard of a warm-up? And I said, no. He goes, audience warm-up. I said, I, I, dude, I just got here. I, yeah. Just, yeah. I'm, I'm there to see. Yeah. And he goes, he, he explained the deal. He goes, uh, Robert has a new show. I'm a producer. Would you like to be the uh, warm-up guy? I said, sure, I guess. I don't know when, yeah. when. He goes, well, you know, Monday. I go, well, you know, I'm leaving Sunday, so I can't do it. And then, so he gives me his card, and I, I tell Ingball, I go, hey, man, that guy wants me to be the warm-up. He's like, I've been here three years. Yeah. <laughs> no one's ever asked me to yeah. anything. Yeah. I went, sorry, dude. And so he goes, you got to move out here. I said, all right, well, I will soon. So then I moved January 89. Uh, lived in LA, used to do the Bay Area all the time, yeah. Punchline. I mean, there were seven clubs back then. Yeah. Um, I just when, read an article that said, talking about the Punchlines, in the 90s, I think it said you and Bobby Slayton were the two top selling. Co- one and two, top grossing acts in, 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 in the, the Bay the Area. Oh, yeah. oh, in the Bay Area, okay. Bay Area, yeah. yeah. That would be, so when you were starting, and you're doing this, so you're at the comedy store, 
and you're at and one thing that we will we are going to talk about is Bob Saget today, obviously, because uh, what just happened. But when you were going to the comedy store, Bob Saget was there. Like a lot of those guys, that was I mean that was a pretty big time for the comedy store. It was huge for the it comedy was, store. So you had the comedy store and the improv. Yeah. Okay. So it was hard for us young guys, new guys, to get spots at the comedy store. Yeah. It happened, but it was hard. It was easier for us to get spots at the improv. So that's where me, Adam Sandler, uh, David Spade, uh, Judd Apatow, all these guys yeah. I started with, that's where we would go. Yeah. And so it was one of these, we'd go back and forth all night long, just seeing if someone didn't show up and maybe one of us could get on. Not, yeah. not all of us, just, just one, one of us. Day. Yeah. And so- you know, every once in a while. So then it became apparent to us it was working better at the improv. Mm. So we became improv guys. And yeah. uh because there wasn't the whole process there was to get stage time. Yeah, with Mitzi. With Mitzi. You had to work there. Work then get up to the belly room and the yeah. whole thing. So I mean, I did I was blessed enough to do shows both, but it became apparent to us improv was the way to go. Yeah, and, yeah. And the improv was taken off. They were opening up comedy clubs at the time. You know, I think uh what? A year and a half, two years later, evening at the improv is on A and E, mm -hmm. all this stuff. So we became improv guys. Um, because the store, when I first went to the store, yeah, Sag, that's where Saget started. I mean, you know, that's where Pryor was, man. Yeah. And I mean, it was just unbelievable. Would you ever would you see some of them go up? Like oh yeah. Yeah. All yeah. I mean, we'd yeah. hang out. Yeah. Would it be like Pryor going up? I guess it'd be would it is the same feel of like Chappelle going up now. Like it's like that kind of not yeah. saying they're the same comic, yeah. but it's like that no, allure. It, it, it would it would be to you guys, it would be Chappelle going up. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it it you would just go, holy crap, Chappelle's yeah. here? Yeah. That kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So um, you know, back in the day, you know, we just moved to LA yeah. and our only we had agents, we had managers, but and we were doing auditions, but no one was making any traction. So we just knew how to do stand-up. That's what got us there. Yeah. So we didn't know anybody. We're not going to go hang out at a restaurant. We hung out at the comedy clubs. So, and the Laugh Factory was non-existent back then. It may have been there, but no one went there. Igby's was there, uh, West LA, and uh, the Ice House, Pasadena, then Improv and Comedy Store. That was it. Yeah. And then the Improv opened up one in Santa Monica. So now we had another spot. But we would just hit them all every night. You know, yeah. we and this was way before texting and all that, like yeah. phone, phone calls. Mm -hmm. Hey, uh, let's start here. So we'd all meet at Igby's. At, we'd get there at seven. Hey, can anybody go up? Got any room? Sure, we got room for one of you. All right, well, who hasn't been on stage in a couple nights? You know, yeah. All right, Spade, you go up. And then, we, okay, go to the next one. Okay, take two of you. Okay, uh, Henry, you and Adam go up. Okay, and we just do that and yeah. we'd get stage time that way. And then we became pretty good yeah and so it got easier to get stage time and then we ended up just getting spots and our name would be on the board yeah and it was legit yeah it's like the best feeling ever and it was yeah when I mean, your name's on the when you're like even though that when it starts happening you're like look i know no one's coming because my name's on it yeah but the fact that they put your name on it yeah and it's that first time and you're like you're just being you're recognized by the club it's like no this is one of our top guys mm-hmm is is there's not much of a better feeling no like, there's not as a like, stand-up it's the great stand-up because that's your goal i mean that's your goal that's your only goal basically you want that and then after is like almost like you almost can't expect it right but you're like that at the beginning that's all you can think about is like i just gotta get my name on that board. if I'm, my name's on that board yeah. i and so when i first moved to la i had all these la comics who i toured with yeah and so they were like encouraging me to come out so my first time ever at the improv uh I, I was, I, they gave me, I had a spot. My name wasn't on the list, but they gave me a spot. Mm. So I go up and I read the list. I call my buddy back home in Knoxville and I read the list. He's like, who's there? I went, uh, <laughs> Jay Leno, Jerry Seinfeld, Rick Overton, <laughs> Kevin Pollack. You know, I'm yeah. reading this whole list. And he goes, I've heard of every one of them. I go, yeah. He goes, and I know you, but I hadn't heard of <laughs> you. Yeah, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> I'm trying to. Yeah. So I go up and. I don't know. I went up in the middle. Uh, I know I went on after Overton because he just destroyed. Yeah. And it, as as the MC's bringing me up, Rick just goes, "Take a deep breath. You got it. Yeah. You got it." And I'm like, "Ah, oh, man." He goes, "You got it." So I went up there, did my thing, did great, came up, and there's you know all the big guys right there, and no one stays. Yeah. You yeah. know, you do your spot and you leave. Yeah. And it's almost like having 
during having COVID back then. He yeah. didn't stick around. <laughs> he didn't stick around, yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, but they stuck around. Yeah. And I came off and they waited and they went, see, we told you, man. We told you to come here. I went, man, y'all stayed? They go, yeah, we stayed. You're, yeah. you're, our, you're our guy. And I went, yeah. cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, the, yeah, it is. It is. A lot of comics, we do leave. And then it's like, it is a nice thing when you find out someone you're like someone said. I remember first time in uh, Comedy Magic, Ray, uh, Ray Romano. I didn't find out till later, and they like he went up. He was just doing a guest. I was like, it was like where I could headline Comedy Magic. You know, you do like a Wednesday or something. They give you like you get to do an hour. Oh yeah. And uh, so I, you, I remember, and then Ray was like, and I've like I think might have been the, one of the first times I met him, if not maybe second time. So I didn't really know him. I just kind of like. And uh, and then he went up. He's like, we did a guest set, and I was like, oh man, you know, you got yeah. all that. Like people go nuts when he goes on. Yeah. And then I found out afterwards that, like, much later, I didn't talk to him afterwards, but much later, I found out he stayed the whole time. His kids were there, and you're like, there's not much. You're like, oh man, that's crazy. Yeah. He stayed. He stayed. Because you he, know they want to leave. <laughs> and they had something else yeah. to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you just, yeah. Even if they don't have nothing else to do. Yeah, they want to leave. They want to leave. They don't want to be there. And so you're like, you got to, you got the mindset of you got to keep them. Almost like if you can keep a comic there, probably not all the way through, but like at least like you're about five minutes from closing, that's yeah. that's as good as you're going to get. Oh, yeah. yeah. A comic's going to be like, oh, I'm getting out of here for these. Yeah, everybody before the, everybody leaves. leaves, right. Yeah. No, you're right. Yeah. If they stay, so I'll never get, so Comedy Magic Club, it's my weekend. It's my week. And Gary Shanling, his first time ever hosting the Grammys. Yeah. So he's working on all this material. And so he calls and goes, hey, I'm, I got some jokes I want to run. Can I come down and do a guest set? I, sh- I said, sure. Shanley's guest set is not five minutes. It's yeah. like 25. Yeah. And everybody knows that. And um, I said, why don't you go on right before me, and then you just introduce me. He said, okay. That worked out great, because then I can do whatever I want. I said, yeah, I don't care. You yeah. know that. So he comes down, just so happens, Louis Anderson's doing five minutes because he's got a Tonight Show spot. Uh, I, I can't remember. It was like, it was crazy who was there. Uh, yeah. And uh, Dennis Miller comes in, wanted to do a spot, and he looks in and he goes, dang, Hank, looks like the 27 Yankees. Yeah. <laughs> and I go, yeah. He goes, and you're following all this? I go, yeah, I'm closing it, pal. Yeah. I go, you want to do five? He goes, ah, I'm not going to do that to you. I said, well, it's five more. <laughs> and he's like, no, really, I'll come tomorrow night. I said, okay, whatever, man. But so he hung out. So Shanley does like 20 minutes, yeah. and then he introduced me. And uh, so Gary's like, can I come back the next night? I said, dude, come all week. Just bang yeah. these jokes out. So that's what he did. I mean, Shanley would come and do – 20, 25 minutes before me with his pad out. Yeah. And during my set, a couple, one time for sure, it may happen a couple times, but during my set, I'm closing. And I hear him behind the curtain going, hey, can I try one more? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so I go, hang on, Gary wants to come out and try another. So I come out and stand with me, pull up the yellow legal pad. Yeah. And he tried. I'm holding the mic. And uh, it wouldn't work. I go, that's not going to work. Here, try it. Yeah. I go, try it this way. And then yeah. I'd say something. Then he'd try it. And, hey, that worked. Okay. And we're sitting up there writing jokes just on stage. In those days, you can't do that now. No. <laughs> no, they wouldn't. That's awesome. They wouldn't have the patience for it now. No. Uh, but it's like crazy because he's so, like, I mean, it's such a fun thing because he's, I mean, he's hosting the Grammys. And, like, this is that type of celebrity then. That's a big celebrity. Like, you yeah. know. Like it's it's not that it's not now, but it's just different. It was totally it was different. Like, yeah, there wasn't like almost branches of celebrity. Like I think back then it was like you're either celebrity or not. Now there's like branches. Like you talk about BTS, like right, right. the most biggest band in the world. Like right. I don't know what they do. No, like most like you're like I, there's gonna be people that I don't, never even heard of them. And you're like right. they're possibly more famous than the Beatles. Yeah, <laughs> but they're not because everybody knows the Beatles. Everybody knows the Beatles and those can yeah. can name a song. Yeah. Yeah, that's you're exactly right. Yeah. Now there are branches of now. Yes, there's yeah. It kind of breaks off. Yeah, and so then everybody's kind of got their own. I mean that that's the world you're kind of going now. Where like you finally got you kind of got. Well, there's still like the top. You can get to the top or be. You're kind of like oh yeah, I know that person. But you got to get to the top of your craft. Yeah, I think that's what it. You have to be the. You know, if you can get to the top, of whatever. If you are BTS or I don't know whatever music, you just get to the top of it. Taylor Swift. You're mm-hmm. like well then you're she's just mentioned. Right. Because it's like, yeah, yeah, she's so famous that everybody knows her. Right. You're not going to not know her. Right. You know? Right. Yeah. Uh, but that's how it was back then. You're yeah. right. I mean, Shanley, you know, I mean, there were, uh, everybody watched the award shows back then. Mm-hmm. It actually meant something. Yeah. 
And, uh, you know, that's when Billy Crystal was hosting the Oscars. It yeah. was that whole g- genre. Yeah, yeah. And so Shanley doing the Grammys was ginormous. Yeah. Well, TV was such a big yeah. deal then. Yeah, huge. And it was, it was, you know, to watch TV and to, it was still such a, not that it was a new thing, but it was a new thing. And it was the fact that there was more channels and that was on and they would do these big things. And it was like, I think it was pure. It's probably one of the purest it's been. It wasn't a business. Right. It, I mean, it's a business, but it wasn't, it didn't feel as businessy. No, I agree. I agree. Where well, now, there were no DVR, so people watch stuff live. They watch stuff live. But I mean, yeah. you look at like now, it's like they're making, now it's like, it's like an algorithm of how they're making shows. Mm-hmm. Like they, like House of Cards, always, I always heard, uh, it was like they looked at at the time. They said, "Who's the people on Netflix? Who? What's the actor they like the most?" It was Kevin Spacey at the time, and then the director. They go, "Well, who likes that most?" Perfect. Well, that's they make something. So it was like an algorithm of going like, "We'll just put them together." Right. And so now there's kind of like the the heart and the something's taken out of it. Yeah, it's more it's of just, a science than yeah, yeah. just the soul of a, a of a creativity. Yeah, yeah, is, is what yeah. I think. Yeah, no, yeah. I agree. Yeah, and also you know there's. There's so much money involved with uh, uh, all the all the ad space now for uh, award shows. It used to not be that way. You oh just, yeah. You know, not that I was a big fan of award shows anyway, but mm-hmm. you know, I will tell you when Shanling got the Grammys, we all went, "Holy crap! They're letting one of us do the Grammys." Yeah. yeah. I mean, that was it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what you do think as a comic. You're like, you can't believe. You're letting one you're of like, us. Dude, we're idiots. And, <laughs> yeah, you're gonna yeah. put us in control yeah. of your show. <laughs> yeah. So, but we, you know, when you think back, because I remember I got interviewed about this a long time ago. When they started do, having actors do the Oscars and stuff, I, and it was like, no, you got to go back. Johnny Carson used to do it. Yeah. And you got to have a comedian because yeah. a comedian can wing it. Yeah. You know, you get yeah. actors. I love them, but you know what? It's like Seinfeld says: you stand here. And you say what we tell you to say, yeah. and then we'll give you a trophy. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know? They don't have the confidence to <laughs> no. wing it. Like, it's because they don't want something not to work. We don't care if something doesn't work. Like, no, it's like, it, if it doesn't work, you're like, all right. It, it, it's fine. I'll, I took a swing. Yeah. I'm going to swing. Guess what? I'm going to swing harder. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll you, make the you next thing work. Yeah, you didn't yeah. like that? What You're going to hate this. Yeah, 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 you know, yeah. that kind of attitude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did yeah. you see Fallon come up out there? Yeah, you know, uh, so I was doing the Irvine Improv. Did you ever do it? Yeah. Did you do it when it was across from UCI, or was it at the Spectrum? Uh, I might have done it when it was across from UCI. I think you I, may I know have. I did the Spectrum. But is, I think you may have been yeah. there right when, right before the move. Yeah, but barely, like maybe yeah, yeah. I think maybe once. Yeah, so that's where I used to go, and uh, – you know, this is L.A., yeah. Orange County, but it's still mm-hmm. L.A. Mm-hmm. It's, the, it's the longest, shortest gig in the world because it takes, you know, it's 50 miles, but it takes I did do it. Was it the exit and, and you would get off, drive down, it was on the left in that little in mall? A, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then you you park. Yeah. Yeah. I did do it. Okay. Yeah. That was the great, that yes. was a great room. Yeah. Right across from UC Irvine. So, uh, yeah, it was me, Jim Hope, and Jimmy Fallon emceed. And so a buddy of mine, so Jim Hope, he and I were talking about this, and uh, he goes, remember when Fallon emceed? I went, oh, yeah, that's right, man. Yeah. And I said, wow. I said, I, I, I vaguely remember that. He goes, Henry, you were like, you, you, you were one of the guys. Yeah. Mm. You know, you, you're not expected to remember that Jimmy Fallon yeah, at was time, sitting at the yeah, green. And I yeah. go, yeah, yeah, but I do remember. He goes, he goes, hey, you were super nice. He goes, because we went out afterwards, and I remember you invited Jimmy to go, and he couldn't believe you invited him to go with us and mm-hmm. all this stuff. I went, oh, well, good. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. That was good. Good. Yeah, I was, so I just did the Tonight Show, and uh, we were, I was talking to Fallon a lot about, like, those days with the improv. He talked a lot about the Hollywood improv and, or, and coming up through the improv. Yeah. And he would have been um, maybe two classes behind you or something, right? Or one yeah, class. Yeah, like, yeah. It was, uh, yeah, he was far, like two. Yeah, yeah. It was enough removed that you would be like, yeah, I don't. Like you wouldn't, you wouldn't have known when he started. No, no. And uh, and so like we were just talking about all those old days and like the L.A. and like because he kind of came up through that kind of. I mean, he came out in L.A., so he kind of came up through that world. But did a lot of opening for people, and I don't think he ever really did a big, big tour, and wasn't you know that kind of. He got into SNL, and then once he did that, it's like that kind of. Oh yeah, sent yeah. him off that direction. Yeah, well, I mean, and that's how they all worked. I mean, even in Sandler and Spade, uh, you know, they were middle acts. Yeah. <laughs> You know, they used to middle for me, and they're on Saturday Night Live. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I never get Dave. Dave and I did 
the Tempe Improv, and he's from Scottsdale, and he's on Saturday Night Live, and he's my middle act. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So we go do radio. They go, hey, is Dave coming? I go, yeah, Dave's coming. And I yeah. bring Spade, and Spade would talk about Saturday Night Live and all that stuff. And he looks at me and goes, you okay with this? I go, dude, sell tickets. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah. 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 I'm, I got a door deal. Sell yeah. tickets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. You sell out. I don't care who sells yeah, out. Yeah, because I mean, they, they're almost like they got it. And they didn't, you're, because sometimes you do, you, people get it and they don't have the act to, they don't have the time. They can't close. They can't close because it's like, you're either, that's always, I always said you make it at 20 or 40. Uh, it's like either happens very quick for you or you kind of got to go through the whole circuit. Right. And it's like when it happens for a lot of people quick, they can't do it. Having an hour act is, it's very hard. It's very hard it's after very hard. after one or two guys goes up and talks about stuff you may have yeah. talked about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's even more difficult yeah. and and that's the whole thing i mean those guys we used to tour and they were like on their way to being super famous but we'd still do it because we love to hang out and play golf and do all this kind of stuff yeah. and so and then they got entrenched into snl and they stayed there so that's what, same with fallon fallon was this guy coming up and you know as talented as he is obviously they jumped on it and yeah and, and made it you know but i'll never forget the first time probably the first three weeks uh adam and david were spade and sandler were at snl you know they, they'd call me and go man i just wrote five of the funniest things i've ever written in my life and it didn't get past stage one wow we we may be home pretty soon yeah and i'm like oh really and they go yeah it's brutal man so and you know and they're getting paid not tons yeah. enough but not to live in new york mm -hmm. yeah so you know and they they just kept you know battling it out and and pitching 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 and finally you know they both caught breaks yeah and so, got yeah and then and got on the show and they got on the can like yeah, yeah they were writers they were writers yeah they weren't even supposed to make yeah. they make do little cameos and uh i'll never forget one time there was like some big party scene and they both were in the scene like you could see yeah, them yeah, yeah and it was like the <laughs> biggest deal in the world you guys are actually on snl yeah, yeah, yeah you yeah. didn't say anything but you're there you're there <laughs> looking yeah yeah you're like yeah. we know them yeah <laughs> yeah it was a crazy. big deal it yeah. was cool. When you like so when you were coming up, uh so I mean coming up in the eighties, uh well late eighties, then the nineties, like I said, you get those chicken wire, like all those kind of gigs. Like it was I mean, it was really like a wild west. Like uh was it there was no like corporate kind of world to it or like uh, managers, agents, you had them, but No, yeah, I, I understand what you're asking. Yeah, it was it was like the Wild West because yeah. comedy was booming. Yeah. All right. It was the rock and roll of the eighties was the thing and there was this huge wave going on and luckily i caught it just that just before it all busted yeah yeah um but it was so everybody was doing comedy i mean aubrey pippen used to own a bunch of gentlemen's clubs and he switched them into comedy clubs <laughs> wow i mean that's how popular that's, it was. that's how popular yeah. it was and it worked i mean yeah. you know it, it was kind of weird you go out there and you know the stage is a t and there's a pole and all that but, <laughs> you know you gotta kinda, walk around the pole <laughs> yeah you know i do a little spin yeah but yeah. you know i but, mean every comic had to touch that but like it's like <laughs> you're, you're you know you're all going to and be like well i might as well touch it yeah <laughs> may as well so yeah and well that's where we started yeah so comedy started in those establishments but so are, uh, that's how big comedy was yeah it's like i can make you know, however many times more money getting three guys no one's ever heard of to come here and tell jokes than having 20 women I got to take care of and <laughs> yeah. whatever. So that's what we did. We yeah. did, we told jokes everywhere. And then they came up with creative entertainment where uh, the chicken wire gigs came in. And so they'd go to a bar in Ozark and say, okay, Monday, you got Monday Night Football. Tuesday, you got dwarf to to tossing. Yeah. Wednesday <laughs> is wet t-shirt yeah. contest. Yeah. Friday, Saturday, you got a band. You got nothing on Thursday. Let's do comedy. Yeah. And by golly, two of us would show up on a Thursday <laughs> yeah. night. Yeah. And we do comedy. Yeah. And so that's just how it was. Yeah. And so all these bars had their schedule, but there was always one night they didn't have something. Yeah. And it was the Wild the West. Comedy. I'd always hear stories about shady managers. If you had a door deal... These are in legitimate clubs that would – they tried to cheat you out of door deals and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. There was uh, a notorious one in Seattle. And uh, so uh, it was Jeff Dunham, me, and Jake Johansson were yeah. back to back to back. All had door deals. So we knew something was up. And so I called Dunham and I said, hey, man, I think you really shorted me, blah, 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 blah. Dunham goes up first show, Thursday night, packed. And has people count off. 
Uh-oh. <laughs> well, he didn't. Walter did. He had yeah. his little dummy. <laughs> yeah. Hey, y'all. Or whatever. Yeah. Peanut. Y'all count off for me. <laughs> so uh, he does. He sits there and goes, hey, well, let's try something here. Because, yeah. you know, I, a friend of mine, Henry, was here. And, uh, you know, no. and so he told the whole story. And by golly, he had people count off. One, two, <laughs> three, three, four, four, five, six. Just the whole thing. Thank you all. Okay. Did his show. Goes back. Checks with the <laughs> ticket office. And they were off. Yeah, he got ripped off. So he calls me and goes, "They ripped me off like twenty five. So yeah, something like that. So <laughs> it became this whole thing. But yeah, Dunham just. I go, you wait, you did what? He goes, I made the audience count no, off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I go, what? He goes, well, I didn't do it. I go, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Grover did yeah, it or yeah, whatever. Yeah, His name's crazy. Peanut. Okay, yeah. yeah, we're gonna get a fight about this. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm not crazy. I always like that story. Uh, Bates said uh, someone telling the joke over. Was it where was that at? telling the joke? The uh, same joke in the same yeah, show? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Countless times. Yeah. Well, was, but it wasn't it one was three times. Oh, it was, was it Mike Spingberg? Yeah. Spingberg. Yeah. Spingberg told three, three times. Like something. The same joke three times yeah. in the same <laughs> set. Yeah. yeah. It's like, as if it said, you walked out, you go, did you, did you say that joke again? Yeah. Yeah. He goes, that two times? You go, that was the third time. I go, dude, dude, you've already said that one. He goes, twice? I go, third time yeah third time yeah. Yeah. yeah i think you're done i think it's yeah, over it's time yeah. to come off third time doing third the same time. gym yeah but that was the thing you know so we would do three shows on saturday night yeah eight, eight ten and twelve and you know you're headlining you're doing 50 ish yeah mm-hmm. and if you stray too much during the show by that third show you're sitting there going holy have i even set this up did yeah. i talk about this yeah. i mean it so it became a it almost became sad because Saturday night should have been the most fun. Everything's packed, but uh, but it almost those shows you had to just compartmentalize. Yeah, and just here's my set. I'm yeah. doing it three times. Yeah, I, I remember Zanies doing the Chicago Zanies, the first club I ever got to go up at, and the first one, one of the first ones that I headlined. Uh, and I remember having that three shows Saturday night, and it was, and I did it. I think some. I call it a little bit of it. They don't really do that that much. Maybe they some of those clubs still do it. Yeah, very rarely. But it's uh, it was it was so much, and you were like, by the time you get to third, you're done. You're you're done. That lot, midnight crowd's drunk. Yep. You don't want to uh, hear your voice yeah. again. Yeah. And you're just like, let's just get through it. Yep. And you're and you don't know what you've said. No. And it just and it, and it's sad because you do it by rote and you're not really performing. You're yeah. Just mm-hmm. getting through a show. So that. I always argued about doing those third shows. I said, you know, I said, I get it. We're packed. We're sold out. We're all making money. I said, but it's no fun. It's no fun. And I'm here to, to have fun. Yeah. You, okay. The fact that you pay me is crazy. Yeah. But I'm here to have fun. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and plus three shows. Good night. It's just. I mean, just. The wear and tear. Yeah. When the improv opened in Ch- Chicago, North Wells, it was so popular. We'd do two Thursday, three Friday, three Saturday, two Sunday. God. That's crazy. And that didn't ma- mention yeah. the one on Tuesday and the one on Wednesday. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's what yeah. I tell these guys all the time. It's like a vacation. I, you guys have no idea. We used uh-huh. to work Tuesday through Sunday, Wednesday through uh, Wednesday through Sunday, Tuesday through Saturday. There wasn't this Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Yeah. And there mm-hmm. were all this whole Because they would just run because it was so popular. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, that was the whole thing. You'd show up What on- are you getting paid like back then? Like for, like, if you headline a weekend, you're made no credits or like just whatever you're. No credits, no name, funny bone, St. Louis, Tuesday through Sunday, nine shows, probably making maybe 1,200. Yeah. If nine you're shows. the. Yeah. I'll never forget. Yeah. Uh, we were in West Palm Beach, Florida. Foxworthy and I used to go down there in spring training. So we go down in February. And oh, this one place was awful. They didn't have a phone. So he had to use the phone down the street, <laughs> <laughs> a pay phone. So yeah. I'm down there with a baseball bat so he can talk to his wife yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> at you know midnight. Yeah. It's really smart. But he made $1,000 that week and he put ten hundred dollar bills on his bed and we just sat there and stared at yeah. him <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. he's like can you believe they paid me a thousand dollars to do that I go, no <laughs> well, i can't yeah. that is nuts yeah thousand wow. dollars yeah yeah For i mean you get nine shows yeah nine shows now they still pay you twelve hundred, but you just do six shows <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah yeah the math's better yeah the math, yeah it's like you don't have to go out as much yeah that's uh yeah it's so I always talk to like I remember talking to some guys that have been before your time, where they would have even been they would have they would have started in the seventies they would call the entire AD run right where it was this boom and they were saying like I remember some the older comics they were saying I was like you know what 
because people would be doing Carson, they'd be doing, they'd be famous, mm -hmm. they'd be known. And I was like, what happened? And they would like say, we just got, we didn't write anymore. We just, they were making, you know, in the eighties, if you're making 12, they're probably making maybe five grand a week in the Which 80s. is crazy. Crazy. You're rich, you're a rich yep. person. And they would just go and then it was a big party and they had the best time in their lives. But when it was done, it was like they they had the same act, they had the same, you know, and then it was like, well, eventually that just cycles out and you're like new guys come and then Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. I mean, I know guys that did the exact same show verbatim for at least five years. I yeah. mean, ex identical yeah. verbatim. And there was no turnover. And that's just what they did. It and was probably hard to have turnover because you weren't then you weren't on TV, you weren't on you know, no. like, it, well, you didn't have specials, you didn't have no. all this stuff. It was hard to turn over because you're working 50 weeks a year. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we worked, my first two years of doing stand-up, I worked 50 weeks yeah. a year. And you got to murder every show. Every show. Yeah. And it's a lot of shows. Yeah. A lot of shows. So you, you, you're, and, and we, like I was saying, we worked all week. It's not like we had four or five days a week off. Yeah. And just did weekends. How long would you be gone? You remember like a long the stretch? The first or? stretch, uh, the longest stretch I did was 18 weeks. Yeah. I worked myself from Knoxville to Billings, Montana and back. <laughs> yeah. Nine up there, nine back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. That's crazy. Did them all. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it was crazy. I'd sleep in rest, rest stops in my truck. You know, I had a 38 on my chest, yeah. stuff like that. There were some pretty rough places. Come on with $800. <laughs> and then you're net. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Did so I would talk. I just did the tonight show. This is the tonight show. I've done tonight show. Uh, I think it was now is like the tenth time of the Fallon Tonight Show. Wow! And it's uh, it's an amazing like it's Fallon's been awesome to me. Mm -hmm. Everything's been great. Uh, you know, but it's like when you came up, did you ever do Carson? No. So I, here's the here's what happened. I was supposed to be Johnny's last new guy. Yeah. And so it was all. Everything was set, and you know it's like it is now. Maybe even more so, having to run your spot, your yeah. set ten times in town. They're nitpicking it, but I had mine, and so I was going to be Johnny's last new guy. And then Johnny, Mister Carson, announced his retirement. Yeah, like three weeks after I got my date. So, uh, everybody and your brother wanted to do Carson one more time. Yeah. yeah. So I was backstage at NBC countless times. I was in TV Guide, supposed to be on all these things. Yeah. TV Guide's a magazine. Used to have <laughs> yeah, no, no, anyway, yeah. so Brian knows what it is. <clears throat> oh yeah. yeah. So, uh, <laughs> uh, and then I'd be standing there, and all of a sudden, Bette Midler would walk in. Yeah. Not scheduled. Yeah. And then Clint Eastwood, and then Burt Reynolds, and then like, so I went, okay, I guess I'm getting bumped again. Well, I'm getting bumped again. Just kept the whole thing. Mr. Carson, very nice. I always apologize, said, you know, I wish I'd have waited, blah, blah, blah. So Leno's taking over. So Leno's like, hey, you know, when when I take over, I still want you to do the show. And I said, I've never done it. He goes, yeah, you have. I saw you on it. I go, Jay, I, I never, I was there. Yeah. Yeah. I've never done it. Yeah. He's like, that's crazy. And I told him what happened. He goes, oh, that's right. He goes, I thought Shanley was going to give you a spot. He goes, he was. And then he changed his mind. Because Gary's like, I have three more spots. Yeah. Maybe I'll give you one. And then he got down to it. He goes, I can't do it. I said, I get it. I get it. Yeah, it was like I mean it's I a, get it. I mean Shanley guest hosted for yeah for Johnny. So Jay takes over. He goes, Okay, you're gonna be my first new guy. So I was. I was on uh, Jay's first Friday. Wow. The week wow. he took over. Yeah. So it worked out. Yeah, it worked out. Yeah. It's that guest hosting too was that's kind of gone. Yes. Now, did he do it a lot? Who Jay? Carson. Carson. Carson, yeah, he had a lot of guest hosts. He never worked on Mondays. Oh, really? No, Carson. So Johnny, so the Tonight Show with Johnny Carson used to be ninety minutes. Wow, it was an hour and a half long, and then he cut it down to sixty, and then he cut it down where he only worked three days a week. <laughs> Towards he, the end, yeah, Thursday, Friday, yeah. Saturday. Yeah, I mean Thursday, Friday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Yeah, I think was what it was. So it was like when he was when he was ending, everybody was like, "Yeah, dude, he's been ending for a few years now." Like he's yeah. was winding it down to be like, "I'm done." Yeah, I mean he's the most famous person on the planet. I'm sorry, I thought it yeah. was muted. That's okay. Yeah. Pulled up. Yeah, this is the Tonight Show. That's 1992. Yeah. Leno bringing you out. Cowboy boots on. Still wear those. Same yeah. size. Same size jeans, by the way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. It's like Seinfeld. And, uh... So here's the crazy thing. I've never, I never wore jackets. Yeah. And uh, everybody's going, you got to wear a jacket on the Tonight Show. And yeah. I said, I never wear jackets. They go, you got to wear a jacket on the Tonight Show. I got, I, and Seinfeld goes, it's the Tonight Show. Yeah. I said, I'll wear a jacket. 
Yeah, yeah it's crazy. Yeah. Did your parents like? Did it get easier? Like once they see this, is like was it the Tonight Show like your first? Like everybody's like, oh, you know, like yeah. you know, you're successful before, but no one gets it. No, when one they're not in the system. No, no. Yeah. And they're and then, but everybody knows what the Tonight Show is. Of course. And yeah. So, when this. The, yeah, my dad was fine after this. Yeah, my mom was always behind it. So before the Tonight Show, though, I was I'd already I was doing Arsenio Hall. Yeah, uh, I did Pat Sajak show. <laughs> Pat was his ratings were number one for like six months. Wow. Really, he was yeah. beating everybody for six months. Wow, still uh, doing it. Yeah, wasn't there a crazy story you were in San Diego or something and and. They like, flew me up by a helicopter. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. CBS. This is the difference. Yeah. CBS and Fox. So uh, Fox would have sent a car. CBS yeah. sent a helicopter. Wow. From where? From San Diego to CBS. Oh, because they needed someone. No, I was on. Oh, but I was stuck. Yeah. And so I got to CBS Television City helicopter. Yeah. Just do a little stand up yeah. on the Pat Sajak. Yeah. Pat Sajak. <laughs> Wait, Pat, who's Jeopardy host? Trebek. 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 Trebek, yeah. Pat Sajak is Will Fortune. Yes. So yeah, he's still doing it. Yeah. 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 But so it's great. He had a talk show. Yeah. And so, because uh, I'll never forget, it was at the time I was I was in the queue to do the Tonight Show. They were coming out to see me mm. and all these things. I had, and Jim McCauley was the guy. Jim McCauley said, thumbs up, thumbs down, you're on or not. Yeah. And so I asked him, I said, Jim, what do you think? And he said, you know, I think maybe in a year or two. Yeah. And I said, okay, I get that. No problem. He goes, nah, he goes, you're, you're you know, you're blowing up and everybody's going crazy, but I really, a year or two. Yeah. And he goes, unless Johnny sees you somewhere. Yeah. And so I thought, well, how's that going to happen? Eh, maybe he'll be watching TV, you know, stuff yeah. like that. Hmm. So then Sajak comes up and my agent's going, Sajak wants you. And I'm going, I don't know. I'm, you know, I'm going to hold out for the Tonight Show, blah, blah, blah. And then Arsenio goes, hey, can you do, you know, October 12th? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, heck, if I'm going to do Arsenio, might as well do Sajak. Yeah. So we told Sajak, and Sajak went. No, I did Sajak three times in three weeks. I think. Wow, it was in yeah. six weeks. Something yeah. crazy. Yeah, and um, uh, because I knew it was going to be a year and a half before I did the yeah. show. Yeah. So whatever. So I'd already done those shows. So my my mom was, you know, once I did Pat Sajak, my mom was fine. Yeah, but it wasn't until I did the Tonight Show was my dad okay. Yeah, yeah. Because he had no did, idea did you who ever, Pat Sajak was. Do you ever think though, like with you think that hurt, with the Tonight Show, did it would have hurt you because you did those other two shows, or uh, if you'd have waited it, or you know, I think had a it it didn't hurt me. Yeah, yeah. you know, it I'm, doesn't sound like it did. No, it, it didn't hurt me because I mean, this was uh, I did the Tonight Show first time ninety two. So I mean. My first six months in LA, I get a spot at the improv, I get an agent, I get manager, I'm reading for everything there is to read. Yeah. The problem Hollywood had was they'd never been around an Asian guy who talked like I did. Yeah. yeah. I don't and, know if people have. And I, yeah, they still don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I used to have a real thick accent. Yeah. So I used to talk like this. Yes. Used yeah. to be like, you know, I was a country boy from Knoxville. Uh, it wasn't until I started hosting Friday Night Videos on in 94, 95. Yeah. First video I introduced was Air Smith, was Steven Tyler. <laughs> Air Smith. <laughs> Air Smith. <laughs> All right, coming up next, we got uh, Air Smith, Steven Tyler, going to walk this way. <laughs> and the producer came out, Gary Constantine, and he was over all of NBC late then. Yeah. Uh, SNL, Tonight Show, yeah. Conan, all Letterman. He was over all of them. Yeah. And my little show, Friday Night Videos. Wow. But he came out, he goes, I can't understand a word you're saying. Yeah. He goes, I hired you because you're a great host, and I like your look, and I like you, but you got to move your mouth. All right, I'll try. Yeah. So that night is when this voice became what it is. Yeah. Because I had to start enunciating. So, but still, Hollywood couldn't figure out what to do with me. You know, people always go, man, you got to lose your accent. And I'm like, uh, yeah, whatever. And they just go, surely there's other people like you in the South. And I go, I don't think so. No, there's not. <laughs> there's, there's not. not. I know y'all yeah. fly over, but yeah. there's not. And so it was really hard to get something unique. And there was a lady at NBC over development named Shanna Landsberg. And she got it. So she got me a meeting with uh, uh, Brandon Tartikoff, who, who is why Seinfeld happened, yeah. the show. He's the genius behind it. And... Uh, He's the one who kept it on the air. Yeah, the one that liked it. Yeah. yeah. He yeah. was the that, guy. That saw what it was. He saw what be. it was. Yeah. So 
I was going to go in to see Brandon, and uh, Shana said, I said, really, Tartikoff? She goes, yes. She goes, he flipped out. He said, what, Asian guy? An Asian guy leading? Are you kidding? She goes, don't think Asian guy. Think, think cowboy. Yeah. <laughs> probably kick your butt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Without martial arts. <laughs> <laughs> and so yeah. I walked in, and he goes, holy cow, you can probably kick my butt without yeah. martial yeah, arts. Yeah, and yeah, I go, yeah. I could if you want me to. Yeah, yeah. Is that part of the audition? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so I had this deal with NBC and Tartikoff was involved and all this stuff. And Steve Allen, who invented the Tonight Show, huge supporter of mine back then. And he's like, Shana, we got to get him on TV. You know, there's never been anything like it. Yeah. You know, I did uh, the comedy festival in Vegas, 89. I come off stage or Steve Allen. Steve Allen goes, you ever heard that thing? There's no such thing as a new joke. I said, yes, sir. He goes, you have like 10. Yeah. That no one's ever told. Yeah. 10. He goes, yeah, I no watched. one ever could. Yeah. He goes, no one's come from your angle. No. He goes, we had Southern guys. We've got Asian guys. Maybe one or two. Never both. Yeah. He goes, and then Shana came up then. And he's like, we got to get him on TV. So it didn't hurt me to do the Tonight Show when yeah. I did. I was already, already had stuff going on. You know, but- you know as well as I do, the Tonight Show with Johnny back then. Yeah, that was the Holy Grail. Yeah, and so no one knew he was going to retire. Yeah, I thought I'd always get a chance to do it. Yeah. So then once I got in line, knowing I was going to get to do it, I was like, okay. And then that had never happened due to the circumstances. You know, I was fine. Yeah. Mr. Carson knew who I was, well, yeah. appreciated me. And, that's and you got to go there. You got to be the first on the Tonight Show, which is yeah, which is even, you know, which is almost even cool. Like, because it's like you could have either been, it's you get like really looking at it right now, you could be like, all right, I can say I got to do Carson. It was at the very end. I was when the last comics got on. If maybe the last, but you would have been lost in the shuffle of like a man retiring. That's a all time legend, right? Or you get a, you get that's how you get. Look at you. Look at you got this great story. You got bumped. Right, the last comment they got bumped from the show. Yes. <laughs> Multiple yeah, multiple times. Go. Yes. <laughs> and the first one on the Tonight Show, like yep. the new one. Yeah. Which then, this is all anybody even knows now. It made your like, bio yeah. a lot more relevant right. for a long time. Yeah. yeah, it sure did. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Because Leto, it's not like he's a flash in the pan. He was on for what, 20 years or something? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Do you remember uh, like when they were all, when like he was going to take over the Tonight Show and Letterman and all that, like that? Oh, man. Yeah. I remember that whole, oh, it was unbelievable. And there was so much tension. Um, because I remember I was doing Arsenio, and it was a couple nights before I was supposed to go on, and I ran into Jay at the Comedy Magic Club. Yeah. And uh, he just said, hey, you know, I know you're doing Arsenio, and there's supposed to be this big thing, but there's not. So he didn't say if or when. If, he said when I take over for The Tonight Show. Yeah. I still want you to do both shows. Yeah. And I went. You're seriously taking over the Tonight Show, and he goes, he winks at <laughs> yeah. And I go, hmm, I heard different. But yeah, okay. So, sure enough, he took it a over. A few weeks later, he took over. And oh then, yeah, y'all were here in Letterman. Yes. yes. Yeah. And then it was either or, yeah. but first it was always Letterman. Yeah. You know, because Car like would Letterman just go on a lot. Carson like really liked him, right? Carson right. liked him, and I think it was the Midwest thing. Yeah. I think it was you know Nebraska, Indiana, Midwest guy. Uh, but because he would, because Jay would go on Letterman with his beef. Yeah, what's your beef today? Uh, you know, my beef today is that. Mm -hmm. Why do people do? You know, <laughs> yeah. he always had that. So it wasn't like he went on and was just Jay. Yeah. Uh, he always had an issue to deal with, and I think that's all maybe Mr. Carson saw yeah. during the time. I, yeah. I could be totally wrong, yeah. but this is just my take. So, but Jay ended up being a great host. He was just a great host. Great. Um, and yeah. his monologues kill. Yeah. No one did a monologue better and longer time wise yeah. ever in the history of. Well, it's a comic. Jay stayed being a comedian. Right. Which is everything that we love. Yeah. He and stayed, and he worked at it because he yeah. went to the Comedy Magic Club every Monday night. He yeah. still ran jokes. I mean, every Sunday night. Every Sunday night. Still, still did. Ju still does. Yeah. <laughs> it might be, I think they're closing, but, or something. But they, yeah. I would go there I and mean, I would see him. He eats a watermelon. Yep. 
It's a gets a wall man cutting half eats with a spoon. Yeah. And then just and then goes on stage. <laughs> he just goes on. He does his act. And like it's like we do and he'd run the jokes for the show. Yep. Yeah. Uh, like I remember going to like I went back there and uh <clears throat> I was just in there and like the first time I met him and I like said hi and he was running jokes for the tonight show. Uh I never did the tonight show. Mine I was kind of I was like I had Letterman, I was close. I was supposed to get on it. Uh, they told me they they I, they ended up not liking a joke that I was sending. They didn't think it was right for the show, or whatever. And then uh, Leno, I was in New York, so I don't know if I just Leno. I don't know if I was ever really thought of. And but then it was like I got Conan when Conan was on, which Conan was on Conan, as long. As Conan was, was awesome. Yeah, it was crazy. He was on the whole time they were. Yep. Like that was even weird when Conan took over Tonight Show for Leno. It was almost kind of a weird thing. You're like, no, you're like basically them. Yeah, you were you were on the whole time they were on. Yep, and your show was great. Um, it was I know it's not the Tonight Show, but it was like it's your show. Mm-hmm. Conan was great. Conan was great. He was great. And then uh, uh, is great. And then but he yeah. So it's like that's what I, I remember switching that. I don't know what I was. I'm trailed off now. No, no. Uh, so when Conan took over, here's the crazy thing. So mid '90s, I'm doing Friday night videos. I talk uh, NBC and. So we piggyback the Tonight Show. Mm. So now all of a sudden, I'm on that stage every week for two years. Yeah. Same stage, same camera guys. Oh, uh, wow. Jay finishes taping. Hey, good night, everybody. Dun, 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 whatever the theme song was. And then, boom, audience leaves. I come in. I sit in Jay's chair, put my feet up on his desk. <laughs> we run through sketches, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So same deal. Okay. Then I say, okay, let's break for dinner. We go cater, come back. We shoot from seven to nine. Every week. Yeah. And so I talk him into, hey, Jay's going to be in New York. We should sh- do the show from New York. Hey, Jay's going to be in Vegas. Let's do the show from Vegas. That's where my crew is. Let's do it. So they did it. Yeah. So um, uh, we were doing it in, I can't remember. Man, you and I are bad. You yeah. and I just both go off. It it's just crazy. goes off. It's uh, we started the sentence though. That's what's yeah, good. we do. I started. <laughs> we, let I started. You, we lead you down the hallway. Yeah, that's you, go, right. you know where you're going. You're like, yeah, no. men's room, right? Yeah, there. yeah. Right. <laughs> so, but uh, so I'm on the stage every week. I get yeah. super comfortable, and then it became this weird thing where oh, I don't know what's going to win. So I get to host NBC's New Year's Eve. Uh, I want to say 96 going into 97. Yeah. And all I have to do is beat Dick Clark. No, not beat Dick Clark. Come in second to Dick yeah. Clark. Because no one's going to beat Dick Clark. Yeah, right? yeah. NBC's never had a New Year's Eve show, blah, blah, blah. So I'm downtown watching the ball drop. I'm up there. Got Andy Richter with me. I wrote all these sketches. I wrote one for me and Conan for us to be underneath the tree at Rock 30 Rock. Yeah. And we're inside the barricades. And he and I are touching the tree. Yeah. And he looks at me and goes, man, how'd you pull this off? I yeah. said, I wrote it. <laughs> he goes, yeah, is it any good? I said, you tell me. And he looked, he goes, oh, that's pretty funny. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we did that. I did a sketch where I was on the skating rink. We cleared the ice. Wow. During the holidays. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I told everybody, I said, if I do this in one take, it only, you'll only be off for 10 minutes. <laughs> so everybody pay attention. I'm going to do it in one take. And you know what? I'm just doing one take. Even... <laughs> Dude, yeah. y'all been off enough. Let's go. So I shot it and I skated out there and I did this whole bit. And Tim Meadows came out and we did this whole thing. One take, I went, one take. And place went, wow, <laughs> thousands. <laughs> it was the greatest. So we do all this. And Conan, so I'm doing all this. Now, Conan has been in his spot for less than a year. And yeah. there's a lot of questions. And so they asked me to do some, hey, come right back, you know, stay tuned, come right back from his desk. Yeah. And I said, no. And they're like, why not? I said, I'm not doing that to Conan. This is Conan's show. This is Conan's desk. You know, until he's not here, I'm not getting in that chair. Yeah. And so he's like, hey, are they, are, are you, are you? I go, I'm doing nothing, dude. I'm here just, I piggyback Jay. It's the yeah. only reason I'm in New York. You know, I cut some stuff. I did, I wrote a bunch of stuff. So we're doing these sketches. I did some stuff from SNL. And all this stuff. I said, but I got nothing to do with what's going on with you. Yeah. I said, you're the best one out of everybody. Yeah. So just keep it down. So he was like on the chopping block, but oh, somehow you wow. got over it. Yeah. And then he just wow. boom. Yeah. Cause they didn't get him. No yeah. one got him. Yeah. It was, it was, it was, it was someone that was kind of before his time of like, it was that window of like Carson, 
And the people that watch cars are still watching TV. And so then they see Leno or Letterman is like more traditional. Mm -hmm. And then Conan was someone that would have been younger. So someone like when I was, uh, when I was able to finally be old enough to watch that kind of stuff, like I, Conan would appeal to me. Right. And like he would appeal to the just, anybody just the younger generation. And yeah, I mean, they, I could, that's crazy. Yeah, they wouldn't have got it. Yeah, yeah they didn't crazy. get it. And he was, he was on, yeah. I mean, he was literally on, because they were grooming Greg Kinnear and all this stuff. And I'm like, I got nothing to do with any of that. And I yeah. said, you know, I'm, I, I wrote, I wrote these bits just so I could like do stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Has nothing to do with you. Yeah. So. Were there any other clean comedians then? Was Gaffigan on the scene yet? Gaffigan was, wasn't clean until uh, I talked him into it. He was dirty. <laughs> you kidding? <laughs> and it, but yeah, we're Connie Magic Club. So oh, yeah. me, Alex, Murray, yeah. we're all sitting back there. Gaffigan's got to go pick up his now wife. Who, uh, she still doesn't like me for this. And I'm like, send a car service. Uh, some, yeah. some, some girls flying in from somewhere. Yeah. Who picks them up at the airport? Yeah. Send a car service. Yeah. Yeah, I'm still going, I don't know if I should really do that. Come on. I'll, here, I got them on speed dial. We'll call yeah. service. Yeah. You, you gonna, girl flying in? What do you care? You know, there's girls here. <laughs> and um, so we're talking about his act. And uh, it's like, Alex was like, you know, why can't you do it like, Henry he goes, well, now we're going to do it like him, blah, 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 all this stuff. And I said, not one of your jokes has a cuss word in it. Yeah. It's all throwaway. You'll tell a joke and they go, what the F is that for? Well, yeah. you know, all this is all outside noise. I said, just stop that. Just do your show and do, tell the jokes. Connie Match Club goes up. Probably only does 25% profanity than normal. Destroys. Yeah. Figures out you can do it. And then, bam. So Gaffigan wasn't around. Gaffigan was around. He wasn't clean. I see. Yeah. So back then, considered clean, uh, Jake Johansson, myself, Brown Regan. Yeah. Uh, and Crazy. that's probably So it. there's never been that many. You yeah. think there's going to be clean acts. Maybe there's not as many as you. There, there's really not. <laughs> I always thought there used to be a ton. Mm -mm. And then, not doing the circuit. Yeah. yeah. Not doing the clubs. Yeah. So, you know, you got your other guys, but that they stay in one genre. And like Christian that, comedy? Like Christian, yeah. yeah. and as I get slammed all the time, because I always say I've never lab labeled myself a Christian comedian. I'm a comedian who's a Christian because Christian comedians aren't funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I always get slammed for that. Yeah. I know you're funny, Tim Hawkins. Chill. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, uh, no, they're funny in their own thing. Yeah. Uh, but, but, you know, I still do Vegas every year. That's yeah. what I say. Yeah. yeah. So... There weren't that many. It was, uh, you know, like everybody considered Bill Ingvall at the time clean. And then people go see his act. They go, man, you know, he said F word a yeah. lot. Mm. Oh, yeah, but that's just talking. You know, because yeah. you hear that, but you don't hear it. No, they don't. Yeah. Right. So, and uh, Foxworthy was super clean. He had a couple jokes where he had to throw in a cuss word. And we, re we had rewritten this one joke every way you could. And he goes, you know, it just don't work. It don't. My wife comes out and goes, I'm not going. I look like. Heck, I look yeah. like crap. I look, yeah. it doesn't work. He's got to say, and yeah. so he goes, I tried. I'm just telling you, Henry, I tried, but tonight <laughs> I'm saying it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so there were guys that effort was there. Yeah. And Seinfeld, of course, was yeah. uh, super clean. Larry Miller and um, Dennis Worfberg was crazy clean. Yeah. And uh, so I was a young life leader when I started comedy. So that's why I was clean. Yeah. Uh, I, had, I thought I might have high school kids showing up to my shows and I knew I couldn't do that yeah so that's why i stayed clean i stayed clean through and through chicken wire people throwing stuff i'm like hey shut up idiot i never trust anybody <laughs> <Yeah>. out <laughs> wow. i was always clean and uh so yeah there wasn't a lot to bank on well that the, well and that's the thing too that like when someone books you when if you're not curse if you're not cussing in a chicken wire like then like they're like well we never have to worry about you <laughs> mm -hmm. like it's just not in your it's not going to come up right which right. is a huge thing. Yeah. Matter of fact, that's something else about, um, you know, going to auditions and doing TV deals, as we were talking about uh, back in the fall. You know, m one of my agents, when I was young, said something I, uh, I still resonates with me. He goes, you don't understand. Henry will be there on time mm -hmm. and he won't be hung over mm -hmm. and you won't have to bury something in the tabloids. Yeah. He's going to show up and work and you'll never have to worry about him. Yeah. And I just thought, well, okay, that makes sense. Because yeah. they do. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, we know them. Yeah. We know who they are. I think sometimes too, people think they want that. And then it's the people that are in the business a long time that go, I don't, it's not worth yeah. it. No. Because it's it's like they're people that kind of get, 
they, you know, they're unreliable. They're not, they're not going to show up. They're going to, you know, I mean, I mean, I remember comics doing it even like on, in small stages where it's like, they're not showing up for a show and yes. you're like, you're like, you're not, dude, we're trying to make it and you're not even taking this serious. Yes. Yeah. So I like, you're like, well, you're never going to people, you better be, you got to be great to be doing that. You better be undeniable where you're like a once in a lifetime kind of thing. You tell me you used to tour and open with Bill Hicks, right? Oh yeah. Hicks and was the greatest. You tell me when you'd be waking up to play golf and then it, Yeah, I'd it, pass so this is common <laughs> condos. I'd get up, uh I'd be waking up and leaving to go play golf about, you know, seven, eight in the morning. He'd be coming in. He's like, Hey, wake <laughs> me up at six. All right, all right I'll wake you up when <laughs> yeah, I get up. Yeah. But yeah. It's six p.m. Yeah, six p.m. <laughs> one, of, one of the greatest was uh we were doing a Comedy club and on stage, I had pictures of all the headliners on the back wall. Yeah, and so uh, Hicks is on stage. He, hey Henry, you in you in the room? I go, yeah, Bill, I'm back here. He goes, hey, uh, what do you think about so and so? And I go, yeah, he's all right. He goes, ah, he ain't funny. <laughs> and uh -huh. end up smashing like eighty percent of the frames. <laughs> There's glass yeah. everywhere, yeah. and Hicks was say, he ain't funny. Bam. <laughs> But yeah, he was the greatest. Was, that's so crazy. <laughs> oh, he's he, crazy. Was and this was like in his peak. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. yes. Yeah. This was late eighties, early yeah. no, early nineties. Yeah. Uh, he was the guy. And yeah, he was unbelievable. Yeah, but yeah. He was. I was. He was probably. I probably worked with him. Oh my goodness, twenty. You know, ten, fifteen, twenty times back in the funny bone days. I mean, that's what's. That's a. Yeah. That's a name that like too. Like, I don't know. You don't hear much about people working with him as much as you did and when i first started bill hicks was the one that everybody said they go so who's your favorite comedy every new comic would be it's bill hicks right. everything's about bill hicks right and you remember you thinking i'm like i don't think these people even listen to bill hicks they uh i right. think i get bill hicks more i think i get i can get it more now than i would have been when i first started uh <clears throat> like if you go back and listen to him now you're like i get what he was doing and like you know it's like carlin like i can listen to carlin as I get older, I can appreciate Carlin more now. Oh yeah, because I did. I don't think I when I was twenty five. I'm like, no, you think are, he's some old guy? He's yeah. an idiot. What do you What do you mean you hate golf? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't. You're like I don't <laughs> care about this stuff. Right. And then, but then now, as I get older, you're like, oh yeah, that's why that dude was like that. That's why Bill Hicks was like that. That's right. why these guys were. They were doing that thing that was like kind of no one else was doing. They were going against the the grain. Yes. And against the you know, uh, but Bill Hicks is like you don't hear a ton of people about. Like where I know Ralphie May worked with him, uh, or I did a bunch of st yeah. when he first started. Yeah, uh, and yeah. then yeah, to be in with those guys, you were with Kennison and yeah. So I worked with Kennison a uh, few times. We did uh, I did West Palm Beach with him. I'll never get walked up stairs. He's up there like he's uh, in the Scarface movie, Big Mound. You know, man, you're the clean guy. <laughs> Put his head back down. <laughs> And then I was on a plane with him, America West. That's how long ago it was, America West Airlines. <laughs> uh, and uh, we were flying from L.A. to Vegas. And it was he was doing a bunch of gigs in Laughlin, which actually, you know, shortly after that yeah. is where he, he died. Oh, Car wreck, yeah. going to Laughlin. So, yeah, Hicks, was uh, Hicks, Kennison, the whole uh, out, outlaws uh, from Texas. Uh, Carl LeBeau, who still is around. Yeah. The boat's still around. But Hicks was, um, I'm telling you, I... I've never seen anybody who could take something. I couldn't. I've never seen any comedian take something and take it every way I would have taken it. Yeah, and then just twist it somehow and make it even yeah. better. And I'm like, I mean, he was. We were in a Waffle House one time, and we're, you know, he's sitting there. He's got a book, and you know. You know, it's, I don't know, it's like four in the morning or something. <clears throat> we both had books. We just sit there and just chill and read. Yeah. Get out of the condo. And so we had a paperback, and our waitress said, uh, what you reading for? And he's like, oh, you think somebody's making me do this? <laughs> <laughs> what are you reading for? Yeah. And he turned that into a whole bit. Oh, yeah. And uh, so after she left, we are just hashing that out, just making fun of her. What you reading for? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, that, you ain't was he? To be read. Would he be one of the first comics you think that you saw that you're like, oh, this is they're better. People are better than like you wouldn't have known who he was, right. and you're like, oh, this dude, I don't even know who this guy is. Yeah, you're like this is a different game. Yeah, yeah, yes. That's when you when you'd see Hicks, you'd go, okay, 
what he just did, I would never do. Yeah. I would never. Like him smashing the wood. Yeah. I would never do that. But yeah. you know what? It was it was hilarious. Yeah. I, I had a moment like that with you, Henry. I don't even you probably don't even remember this because it felt so routine for you. But we were I was opening for you at some theater somewhere and you were on stage and you were just like, I'm hot up here. And you just walked. You had a wireless mic, so you just walked and found the thermostat of the yeah. theater <laughs> yeah. and changed it during the show. Yeah. And I was in the back. Like, I cannot believe he did that because yeah. it just felt like you're breaking every rule. We were yeah. just like, I'm just going to change. It's a little hot. I'll yeah. change the temperature yeah. in the theater. I do remember yeah. that. That was hilarious. Yeah. that oh, it's a confidence. It's a uh, Yeah, you're like, oh, I'm running uh, this place yeah. right yeah. now. Yeah. They'll still be here when I get back. Yeah. 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 I remember yeah. Shirley Hempel dropped the mic to go pee one time. Yeah. And I thought, that's genius. Yeah. 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 I got to go pee, y'all. Hang yeah. on. And she just dropped the mic yeah. and went off. And no one can believe that, that you're like, yeah, it's like, what? What? You can't yeah. leave the stage. Yeah. Yeah. Who? yeah. yeah. But yeah, you're right. I did. Can't leave the stage empty. That's uh, I, that's always I remember that was the first things I ever heard, and it was like I still do it. Like when you, I still had that habit of when you're like just doing a showcase, and someone's actually the stage empty now before I come out, but in the theater <laughs> show, but it's right before I come out. But like anytime you're doing a show and you're bringing each other up, whatever, you'd always wait. The guy, the next comic has to be on the stage, and then you shake hands and yeah. you go. Mm -hmm. You're never supposed to leave it. You never leave it empty. You never leave it yep. empty. I still do the same. Yeah, I do that when I'm doing a corporate thing. And this, you know, the CEO or whomever introduces me, and they start walking off. I always go, "Hey, hey, 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 come here, shake my hand." Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> they're like, "What? I own the place." You yeah, know? yeah. You're like, I know, but this, yeah, is, I know, this is the these thing. Are the rules. Yeah, you don't do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, speaking of, so we've been talking for a while about uh, old comedy, uh, but we do want to uh, talk about Bob Saget. Bob Saget. So this comes out Wednesday. We found out last night. Last yesterday, night. Yeah. Last night that he uh, died away. Uh, died 65 years old. Uh, I just did his podcast a month ago. Wow! Uh, and I talked to him, and it was, it. This was one of the like this one like hurt. Like I didn't know him. I don't know him. Like you knew him. Like you've known him for years. But uh, we've crossed paths before, obviously. And everybody talks about how nice he is, and like it's, it's it's you you don't even. I think it's like people are like, yeah, he's nice, and you're like, you don't get it. He was, it's above nice. He's, yes. A wonderful, wonderful person. He looked out for everybody. Everybody. I mean, he, yeah, Saget was the guy. And, and you know, everybody knows, uh, if you've seen him, you know, the, the contrast between his television yeah. personality and his stand-up life. I mean, he was filthy and he was irreverent and he was hilarious. Yeah. Hilarious. But he always took care of everybody. Um, you know, I think back in the day, we'd all be hanging out and there'd be a lot, lot of names. Yeah. But, like, you know, we'd be sitting around and it'd be like, no one would order until Bob said, okay, hey, we're, we're going to order. Yeah. Everybody, yeah, decide what you want. We're going to order. No one would do that until Bob said that. And, yeah. they're, and you're looking around the table going, well, heck, every one of us are there that can yeah. do that. But we always just relented to Bob. Yeah. It was his, he took care of everybody. Yeah. And that's who he was. Yeah. So um, one of my favorite stories is uh, their manager, who had a lot of big clients, yeah. were, had a dinner. And so there's like, I don't know, eight people at the table. And so Gary Shanling's sitting like here, and Bob comes in, and a joke they used to always do whenever they gathered, uh, one of them would fake trip and put <laughs> their face in the other's lap. Yeah. <laughs> so Bob does this. And says, Gary looks down at him and says, I don't know who these other two people are. <laughs> and Bob's like, oh, crap, because I don't either. <laughs> and then there's their manager going, hey, guys, this is so-and-so <laughs> yeah. and so-and-so. I wanted them to meet you, and they're in this position. And it yeah. was very yeah, that that was so always, good. That was the yeah. greatest. I don't know who these other two <laughs> yeah. people are. And Gary just, you know, shambling in that dry, I do not know who these other two people are. <laughs> and he is like, ah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and then when, uh, we uh talking about him taking care of everybody. So uh, we were roasting Tom Arnold. Oh, uh, gosh, I can't even remember. Late A's, early, early O's. Um uh hard rock hotel vegas that i do remember and so i'm on the thing and everybody's going you know how are you gonna roast you're so clean i said i got my stories about tom it's all yeah. good you know and people are going yeah that's right never mind 
So then Saget's MCing because he takes care of everybody. Yeah. So, you know, I don't know how many of there. There are 10, 12 of us going up. <clears throat> Saget's getting ready to introduce me, but before that, he goes off on a tangent about he and Tom being together the night last night and all the things they were doing yeah. and just got as graphic as you can imagine <laughs> Bob Saget would get. And he looks down the list and goes, oh, sorry, Hank. Uh, now here's the cleanest guy in our profession. <laughs> and I just opened up with my finger being somewhere. Here's yeah. Intercho. Yeah. <laughs> and I came out and he goes, sorry, man. I go, dude, that's, don't worry about it. Yeah. So, I mean, that was, that was Bob. Bob yeah. was, um, he took care of all of us. Yeah, it was, uh, yeah, it, when, I, when I heard it last night, it, it just the, the pure shock of it. Uh, is it was I don't know it, it was it wasn't expected it wasn't you know you found out after with Norm it was like you found out he was like sick for a year mm. and you're like sometimes that helps you like wrap your head around it and Bob maybe has something we don't know yet but it's uh it, it's like the the pure shock of it and then like when I did his podcast it was a month ago and like so me and him just started like kind of really talking and it was like someone that I was like this dude's so great and he's so wonderful and it was like someone that I was like oh you know because when you finally been doing comedy for a long time and you're like it's a big deal for me to be like even when it was you would know who i am as a comic or and then bob saget like the older guys that you're like well we you know it's like you want them to know you mm -hmm. and so it's a big deal when they finally do and they you know when bob asked me to do it on the podcast you're like i can't this is crazy yeah dude and like and then getting to talk to him and so it was like i was looking forward to that the friendship that we were that it was building and we right. were and like it was and then for it to like and then last night and you're just like just in the road, you know, he's on the road. We talked about that earlier. Like every comic's biggest nightmare. I, I said it last night to my sister. You said it today when you came in. Well, not no, not talking to each other, but you're like right. your biggest fear as a comic is to <coughs> die in a hotel room by yourself. By yourself. Yep. That's your like you think of it like that's just the, uh, you know that yeah. It, it, it's just it's the only thing you're doing that you're like you're alone. You know you're like we're always alone. You're always alone. Yeah. We're always alone. He that's, was in yeah. Bob was in Orlando, so that's a good. He was in Disney. Hey, yeah. you know what? <laughs> place to be. It was yeah. warm. It's it the greatest. Warm. It's the, the Ritz greatest Carlton, place in there. Uh, it yeah, it yeah. was the Ritz or Four Seasons. He wasn't yeah. slumming. He yeah, wasn't, yeah. He yeah. wasn't Motel Six. Yeah. There was a door on the. There was, there was a door. There was a door. <laughs> it was an honor. There was to be honest, door. it was an honor to <laughs> yeah. die in the. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I just wonder. Yeah. So hopefully he got his points. Yeah. 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 This is all Bob would want. It's he's. Yeah. It's it's. I mean, he was. The best man. Do you remember him getting full house? Like, do you like? Yeah. So uh, I moved eighty nine L A. Uh, I'd worked with Dave Collier previously, mm -hmm. and uh, they have just started full house. Yeah. I don't even know when it started. Maybe eighty nine could yeah. have been the year. Maybe yeah. eighty eight. That sounds right. Um. So, and I knew Saget from the you just know names. Yeah. And uh, you know because everybody toured back then, and uh, you didn't just pop up and mm. boom. Um. Uh, Kuye turned 30. That's how long ago this was. Mm. And he had a birthday party. So we all show up and there's all, you know, Stamos and all these guys. And I'm like, I mean, you know, I've been in town like a month. I'm like, holy cow, there's John Stamos. Yeah. And he called my buddy Chief. So we still call my buddy Jay Chief to this Ooh, day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my mom calls him Chief now. Yeah, that's it's great. Yeah. Yeah. Why well, you call him Chief? John Stamos called me Chief. Chief yeah. Ooh. But uh, so Sagat was there. And that's probably the first time I ever really hung out with him. Yeah. Not at a club, just saying, hey, or something. Yeah, yeah. So, Kouye and I are very close. Uh, you know, we were texting uh, uh, the very next day. Or, yeah. Last night, yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, and it's like, and I mean, he's just always, Sackett's always been that guy. He's always been, what I knew him as was how he was. The yeah, you take away his, his stand-up act, and yeah. I love the way his mind was bent, but. You look at his television persona, and that's who he was. Who he he was, was the guy. Yeah. Not just to mention Full House, but Funniest Home Videos oh, was yeah. just yeah. so huge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. when did it start? 87 is when Full House started. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Funniest so, Home Videos, I mean, <clears throat> did, and he did that, you know, for, I mean. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'll never forget when he started doing stand-up again. Yeah. Shortly after uh, the videos. And uh, he said, man, remember, Henry, you remember when I was funny? <laughs> and I said, yeah. He goes, these people, I go, they don't know you. They know yeah. that guy on yeah. TV. Yeah. Yeah. I said, you just, you, you, you're two different guys. Yeah. And uh, so, 
because he was doing a spot and it was it was rough you know yeah that but that's what's so funny is like he was that guy on tv he was just like a dirty comic yeah. like but it was and it and it like it took people a while to get used to it but it just i don't know worked it was there's no ill will behind any of the jokes that he said no i mean there was no, no. it was like yeah his mind just would go he was gutter bound, man. Yeah. I mean, and yeah. I, you know, and but but it was cleverly. Uh, if there was a way to do it, he did it as clean. Yeah. I mean, like I'm never forgetting. You know, he was, oh, you know, my daughter, she's, uh, you know, I don't know, seven like that. I am nuts over her. Well, yeah. she's about that tall. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just, <laughs> stuff like, yeah. just yeah, it's a great joke. It was yeah. the greatest yeah. joke because he's tall and yeah. lanky, and he would put yeah. his hand down, and yeah. right, he would be yeah. right above her. Yeah, and. Uh, but that's how his brain worked. And yeah. it was, I'll never, the first time he did that, that I saw, uh, was at a showcase, you know, was, he was doing a spot. And I mean, oh, we all fell out in the back. Yeah. Just going, okay. <laughs> Even for Saget, that is brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm it was joking. very quick. It was very jokes. It was very fun. It was very, mm -hmm. you know, and that's what, like, we were talking about in, uh, when I did this podcast about how, you know, he, I mean, he put a post up. I mean, the night before, uh, saying how he was so excited about it. He did two hours in Jacksonville. He was so excited about this new, this new hours, new material. He's been doing a lot more stuff. When we, when I was talking to him, he's like talking about like being more positive and about. He was like, I just wanted people to have fun. I want them to. It was like, which uh, he always did that, but I think he's even more conscious of it. I guess as he was getting older, mm -hmm. and so he's just like, I just want people to be happy and all this kind of stuff. I mean, there's a video that he did. I mean, yeah, this is in Jacksonville, really nice. Audience. So he says about being addicted to it, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, he did two hours yeah. and going to cause I'm addicted to this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's uh, it's crazy. I mean, it's it's you know, golly, man. It's like you keep I. I don't, you know, it's like some people when they, obviously when you're there, like, you know, you end up knowing people. It's not like I, it's y'all, like I didn't start with him or know him for all these years, but you're like, that one hurts. Yep. That one hurts real bad. Like it was like, I just was like really getting to start to know him and it was, and I liked him so much. It was like, you just never thought that would get pulled, you know, that's going to go away. Like this was a dude that needed to be around. Like I feel like he just leveled out the comedy world. Yeah. We, like, it, we got ripped off. Yeah. Yes. Uh, mm. We got ripped off some years yeah. here. Yeah. So, I mean, 65. Come yeah. on. That's that's nothing. That's that's how I feel. I feel like we, uh, you know, you always do the rest rest in peace and, you know, our world's less funny, all that. Yeah, And it is. We, we got ripped off. We got ripped. Yeah. You know, uh, this is, yeah, this is a real one. Yeah. This you know, is, when, not when, that the other ones aren't real, but it's No, like, no, no. Yeah, no, but it's, like Bill Hicks, you know, yeah. guy had cancer and, and mm. Mitch Hedberg and all these guys, you go through them all and you just kind of go... You know, there's some, there, but what, I don't know what happened and we yeah. don't know yet. And yeah. maybe by the time this airs, we, we know, yeah. but, um, yeah, we got ripped off. Here. Yeah. That's how I Yeah. Felt. That's what I, yeah. And I think that's why it hurts. Cause it's like, you're like, it's not supposed to, he's a great man. Yeah. And you know, like his, and not many guys, I'm sorry, I don't mean to cut no. you off, but my, not many guys you go through, Norm MacDonald, you said, and you know, a lot of these guys, you sit there and go. I, I, my personally, I sit there and go, oh, wow, what's, when's the last time I saw them? When, yeah. What's the last conversation we had? Um, and cause none of them come as a, sh they shouldn't come as a shock. Yeah. And this one's a shock. Mm -hmm. I mean, even Kouye said today, uh, just no words. Yeah. Yeah. Like Norm was, you know, it's like you have. Uh, I didn't know that. I know everybody that knew Norm. I didn't know Norm at all. I've only met him once. Uh, he was great. Uh, and yeah, well. he was a great guy. Yeah. And like, it was, it was, you know, it's some of like Norm, you thought, like, you just assume, like, wow, I'll get to meet him. Like, I'll, you know, yeah. right. And then you're like, I'm going to. And you, you don't think you have to worry about it. And then, but then it's like Saget. It's like, well, then I did. And then you're like, all right, I'm going to be talking to this dude now from here on out. Right. Is what I, you kind of think. And you're excited. Yeah. Yeah. And Here's a guy who's a, a, Big guy, big guy in our profession, yeah. and I can go to him. Yeah, yeah. And now one of my guys is not there. He's not there. You know, it's sitting there. Yeah, yeah. It feels it's a uh, yeah. This one hurts. This, this is worse hurts. than uh, you, you know when the old guys go. You know, Don Rickles goes. You sit there and go, oh wow, that's crazy. You know, and they're, they're but that's a different thing. He yeah. was in his. You know, he was he was in the waiting room. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know. 
Yeah, he's supposed to live. To, Bob Saget, like you said, we were talking earlier. Comedians, we live forever. Yeah, we don't die like yeah. this. Yeah, you know, it's we've talked about how it's stand up comedy is so new of an art form, in the sense of what we consider stand up comedy. The original guys, some of them, now they're dying off. A couple of died off just recently. Mort Saul and Jackie Mason. They're mm. two of the very first guys. Period. Of anything, it's yeah. kind of crazy. This, I mean, Cosby. Cosby was one of the first guys of what we consider modern day stand up. Mm-hmm. That it's, yeah. it's crazy they're still around. Yeah, I mean, it's how's he doing? Yeah, he's doing better. Still alive. Yeah, <laughs> I thought he would have died. I'm blown away that he didn't die. <laughs> Who, Cosby? Cosby yeah. Well, like you know, like not to get up, like Paterno died when all that stuff for Penn State. Like Paterno died immediately. Yeah, I think. I, and, like, yeah, Cosby. It's insane to be like, dude. <laughs> how know. are you still not just? <laughs> I can't really remember. I, I yeah. was, I've been drinking with him, so I can't remember. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, what was going on? <laughs> I think we were drinking. I yeah. can't remember. Yeah. Anyway. Kidding. They, yeah. <laughs> so. they do. Yeah, like you said, like they, it's still comedy, right? Yeah. 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 <clears throat> yeah, yeah but those are the guys. So, uh, but guys like y'all, and I don't want, I don't mean to put you in a, it's just different age bracket. Okay. Mm-hmm. And, and career uh, starting yeah. point. Uh, so, I mean, guys like Saget, Seinfeld, Shanlene, Shanlene's gone. I mean, those guys, to you, were like Cosby, Newhart, mm-hmm. Rickles, to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So when you know Newhart's still around, yeah. Cosby's still around. Rickles was in his nineties. Bob Hope. Yeah. You know all of these guys. Did you ever meet Bob Hope? I did. Really? I did his. Uh, I hit balls with him in his backyard. Oh, really? Wow. Nine yard par three, yeah. Duluca Lake. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> it's the greatest. That. So I've asked for one autograph in my life, and I've taken one showbiz picture yeah. in my life, and it was Bob Hope. They were doing a press thing, so we took a picture, and I wasn't going to ask for his autograph, and I took the script that we had, or five comedians, six maybe. Everybody else got it signed, and my buddy was there, and he goes, man, go get it signed. He goes, I know you hate it, but it's Bob yeah. Hope. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I walked over, and Bob looks up and goes, killed you to be here, huh, Hank? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I said, it's not what I do. He goes... I don't have to do it. I said, nah, you better do it. He goes, I'm not going to be around forever, man. Yeah. And he signed wow. it. Wow. Yeah. And I went, thank you. He goes, thanks for uh, letting me be the only one. Yeah. And I went, cool. Yeah. But yeah. Bob Hope was crazy. So he's 92 and they prop him up. And he's, hey, I got to tell you, you know, he played, I think, I mean, he was amazing. Yeah. Just amazing. So Bob Hope, Mer- Milton Berle, George Burns, all these guys I, I met. And uh, uh, Rickles was greatest and a matter of fact Saget is the one who's always said when you get insulted by Rickles it's the greatest thing in the world yeah and Rickles used to always come up to me we'd have a conversation just be in awe and he'd start to walk off and he'd go hey Hank uh, too much starch <laughs> <laughs> greatest thing in the world yeah. <laughs> greatest thing you know nowadays people go oh I can't believe you said that yeah. you have that's Don Rickles it's that Don was Rickles. that was uh he he knighted me it was an honor. Yeah. Every time yeah. he said that, he knighted me. Yeah. And he said it every time mm-hmm. and without fail. Yeah. yeah. Without yeah. fail. Just wow. do a whole thing. Dr. Chu. <laughs> <laughs> it was the greatest. You're going to get us canceled from you doing Don Rickles in 40 years. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm we all go down. We all go down. Yeah. Yeah. Henry did a what? Yeah. 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 Well, uh, thank you for coming on. And I mean, the, hey. you know, and we, we were having you on anyway, and then. But this Bob stuff happened. It's like, you know, it's just fun to talk these old stories, hear about, you know, the days like that. And then, and the, you know, the fact that, I mean, you were around him for so long and uh, how much he meant to everybody. It's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. You're right. Thanks for having me, man. I, you yeah. know, there are guys. There are guys. guys. Yeah. yeah. That's, and you're, gonna the, you're, do, the, you're the guy. It was funny. They're going to have to say it when we, you know, when I get hit by a bus. That you're the guy? No, I don't know that you're going to say he was a nice guy. He was a nice <laughs> guy. Yeah. He was a good guy. Henry's back on. <laughs> you're like, he's gone. You are <laughs> Next week, y'all just sit Henry's next week. Henry's just here. Hey. He's a good guy. So. Real brief. It's quick. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, dude, but we did more on Bob. And, you know, and you're like, ah, we just had, yeah. we had other stuff. We had other stuff. Yeah. We changed it to Henry Land. Yeah. 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 Henry Land. Yeah. Yeah. Can uh, I play some shows for this week? Yes. Maybe? Yeah. I'm uh, back out with Leanne Morgan, uh, Greensboro, North Carolina on Friday, and Roanoke, Virginia on Saturday. All right. All right. Tonight, Wednesday night, January 12th, I'm headlining Zanies in Nashville. Bates is on the show, too. Hey, I may come. You're, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Somebody, I got some uh, friends coming. 
Oh, nice. Look at that. Hey, they tell me gonna be everybody there. come. Yeah, yeah. Come. guess that. I probably yeah, if you yeah. if you want to, of course. Yeah, that ain't happening. <laughs> that's not happening. But yeah. I may be there. I, yeah. You know, it's uh, BTS you, and it, Aaron Weber. Yeah. It's very yeah. It's yeah. very fifty fifty ish. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. I don't know what else is going on. Um. Yeah. But if you uh, that would be great if you come to that. And then this weekend, I'm in Dubuque, Iowa. Yeah. At the comedy bar there. All right. So, you know, nice. You got where you got. Uh, let's see. I'm in uh, Tullahoma, which you both, yeah, both these uh, guys yeah. know it. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I stay close to home in January. Yeah. So Tullahoma yeah. Friday night, and uh, uh, the Dixie Theater, Dixie Carter's place, uh, Huntington Dunn. Yeah, Huntington Dunn, yeah. Tennessee. That one's sold out. So yeah. Get- <laughs> I don't have to plug Just it. Just staying outside. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, you and, see what everybody's going Yeah, get, get in line. Get, yeah. get in line. And yeah. then I'm in Jacksonville end of the month, play golf yeah. and do some shows at the Comedy Zone. Okay. Awesome. Matter of fact, and that's where Saget was. I know. So well, yeah. I'm not at the Ritz, though, so I'm good. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, go check it out. We love you guys. Thanks for listening, as always, and uh, see you next week. Bye.